Can we close wood? Unmuted. It just asked me to unmute, so I unmuted. There we go. <laughs> did it, so did it unmute? It did unmute. Thanks. Um, welcome cool. to the live chat with uh, our friends at the South African Horror Fest. Uh, Paul and Sonia, they've been running it for sixteen years. Sixteen. Yep. So uh, hello, John. Happy birthday to Jacques. Happy birthday, Jacques. Thank you. Uh, now everyone can send you shots. <laughs> send, 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 send Jacques shots in the, in the comments. Um, yeah, so that's, that's, uh, if, if, if I have it at home, I will look at the list of shots and I may or may not decide to drink any of them. Probably not. You'll have to match them. Match the virtual shots with real ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how does it feel to be running a horror fest in the middle of an actual epidemic? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a roll with the punches and do what you have to do thing. We just, um, we didn't want to cancel the festival because obviously when all of this broke out, I mean, we just, we just got back, literally got back from Paris. Everything was going down. When was this? In we we got back beginning of March, uh, and we literally just made it back into the country. I, I was quarantined the moment I came back. I couldn't go to work, and I've not been to to work since. Um, but yes, yeah, so it it literally as we came back, everything started to fall apart, um, and we knew um, we sort of knew early on that it, it was going to have an impact on on how we are going to do the the film festival, the horror fest. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, part of the, like any film festival is that, that physical attending the theatre and it's, it's people that are movie, they are theatre and cinema fans. So it's yeah. a case of, are we going to now completely ditch that? Are we going to have to? Are they going, are we still going to be in total lockdown by October? So yeah. we had to juggle all these things around, but we, we still just kept on. People were still submitting their movies as yeah. we were deciding how we're going to approach this. But um, so we had to we had to do it virtual um, for the most part, um, just obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are actually we actually surprised, pleasantly surprised that we are able to do selected titles at screenings at the Labia. Yeah, yeah we did. We're doing six movies at the Labia, uh, sort of spread across the festival period. But I mean, it's still it's even even with everything running the way that it does, there's still some uncertainty in the air at the moment. But yeah. I think that's why we opted for having a having doing a virtual. I think early on we knew we we're going to have to do it this way. And I mean, even friends of ours that organise other events, they also opted for for virtual. Yeah, Patrick and Metal for Africa, they do their live shows there to do the, the winter was winter fest or winter, summer fest. It was summer. Summer fest. Oh, winter. Winter, winter fest. fest. <laughs> <laughs> that, they had to do that virtual yeah. as well with with uh, bands streaming in. So it's it's just it's become a kind of. Just a matter of fact, you, you don't have a choice. You have to do that. But now, yeah. since the cinemas, I mean, we were sort of watching the, the news and the, the updates on the lockdowns when we saw cinemas can open again. That was quite cool. But obviously not. Well, the, the maximum capacity they can take is 72 people. Okay. So it's spread apart. You know, all the, mm. all the um, social distancing yes. measures, all that will be in place. But, you know, so it'll be a big cinema with spread out crowd. <laughs> um, but it's cool. I, we, we didn't want to completely discard the actual uh, physical event because yeah. that's 
part of that, that is part of it. Also because at the Lavia Theatre, you know, the old vibe of the place and everything plays a part yeah. in, in the old festival. But I mean, we also had to, um, we had to figure out how are we going to do this virtually? Because you have, yeah. you have festival services abroad in Europe and the States that do it for you. Mm. But it's costly. It's it's not cheap. And also building a platform and developing a platform to do this kind of thing yourself is, we, is just as costly. And, yeah, and we, we, we didn't have enough time, really. But we, we discussed with, with some guys who are clued up on these things to create something for us from scratch. But that was just too risky to do that, uh, to have it done in time. But uh, uh, sort of coincidentally, along the way, um, I connected with, with Benjamin from Fright Fan. Um, it's a local South African based um, horror streaming service. Um, okay. But independent, independent yes. movies that you can sort of rent online. And we were chatting to and fro because they also wanted to upgrade their system to a, to a new to version 2.0. And we needed a platform to stream the, the festival. And we just yeah. connected on that. And then they jumped in and said, cool, they'll assist us. And at the same time, that the tech guys had so much that they needed to, to calibrate, adjust, change, update, because it's these systems are so finicky, it has to be a very every single file has to be exactly a certain way. So yeah, yeah that I think they, they they're still running around yes. there sorting out stuff. So <laughs> no, we, I think the festival has put them literally through spaces that then didn't even know exist. Uh, yeah. with some technical issues but yeah. we are very thankful and, and mm. they are a great brand and um, people should really go check them out um, and we're very yeah. proud to be um, on board with them because initially they were also they, they were going to see if that you know if we can do some just some kind of a free free code giveaways with the RFS like as in just prizes okay. for people but then that just turned into them actually running the festival for us on the platform and Initially, I must just double check that this is still the case. What they're going to do is for each, well, people can buy individual tickets for each movie. You can pick one mm -hmm. and just watch that. Yeah. Or you can get a full festival pass and then have access to everything. Okay. Um, and the festival runs from the 28th of October till the 13th. Friday, the 13th of November. <laughs> and within that period, um, about, I'd say about half the movies will be available across the full spectrum of the fest. But then okay. the other ones, you know, because of various copyright issues, distribution issues, some of them still need to screen at other festivals. Um, mm. They'll only be available for, one of them will be for five days, one will be available for three days, uh, a whole bunch of them will be just 48 hours. It's a two-day uh, two day period in which you can watch the movie. There's a, one for one day or no, one for six hours, six hours yeah. on Halloween. Wow. <laughs> the okay. documentary, the horror crowd. It'll be from six till midnight. That's the only time you can yeah, watch it. No, Paul Curran wow. has a master's in negotiation skills. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of the, uh, actually, most of the festivals abroad, they kind of, you know, the movie you watch, it's kind of like going to the festival. If you don't get there in time, you miss you it. You miss it, yes. But you know, we, we just told them, you know, need to be a bit flexible. Some people are there they're at work. Some people work late. Some people want to maybe watch it at three in the morning when they get back from work or from <laughs> Well, you can't get home from three o'clock from a party. You can. What time is the lockdown? It's six twenty. Yeah, okay, so you get back at home at twelve o'clock on the dot, then you can go watch a movie at the horror fest. Um, yeah. But what I wanted to say was, with their um, with the giveaways that we were um, discussing with them, um, sort of free movie codes to stream. Um, what the plan was, when you buy a horror fest ticket, you'll get a free movie ticket. On the regular Fright Fan, platform, yeah, for one of their sites, which okay. you can then watch when the festival's done. Then you can go back there and you can go watch from their catalog. You can go watch them. Okay. Yeah, so, so we want to we want to encourage people to to because they they uh, Fright Fan specializes in horror form. So we really yeah. want to encourage uh, people to subscribe and and support local streaming service like them. Yeah. And just for the genre as well, it's wonderful. It's mm. great. And we have yeah, for just. But we didn't expect anything like that to pop up locally, so it's very cool that they they took the chance. And we all know that. I mean, horror makes a fortune abroad, but in South Africa, the audiences are quite they're quite picky. Shy. <laughs> and yeah, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a horror movie horror movie that you think would draw a huge crowd. And yeah. People, well, movies like it, it one and two, they were they were huge. But then the other movies that sometimes expect people to call in, and then they just 
don't. So it's a it's a gamble always, always with, a, with any sort of horror genre. A coin flip, yeah. And then yeah. you know, then we take this ridiculous chance to put an entire festival together just focused on horror. But you know, we like it. So and we know other people like it. So we kind of we're a, we're a we're a public service <laughs> for, for, for odd people who like odd things. Yeah. So just on no, that. We represent. Just on that, so I, do you do you know if you're still the only uh, festival focused strictly on horror movies on the continent? I know there was that was true a couple of years ago, but I don't know if uh, it's sort probably of sp- not. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of any others. I mean, there are people that do sometimes like the Bioscope in Johannesburg. They do like a little a little block of movies that mm. might be sort of horror related over over the season. Uh, there's a, a small cinema we actually chatted with them. Reg, Regnet ah, man. It's it's a it's basically a, it's like a twenty thirty seater cinema in Joburg, um, and they wanted to find out about screening one of the festival movies there. So I'm still waiting to hear from those producers if it'll be fine for them to screen it there. Um, sent them a couple of our short films, but you know they're doing a little horror stretch, like about a week. So I mean, yeah. lots of people. I mean, they anyone and everyone's free to do it. So we're not. Yeah. We don't have a monopoly on screening horror movies, but. Over 16 years, we've kind of established ourselves as, you know, that is kind of, uh, I don't know what you say, the horror festival in South Africa, but it's the, the most prominent one or the Definitely. most established one. Most like. notable yeah. one, for sure. But I don't know, there might be something in Ghana with some, with some weird stuff that they make there. That's so Nolly, it's Nollywood. Yeah, who knows? Well, I mean, it's but almost it's old enough to vote. Yes. Yes. If, yeah. if the horror festival was a kid, it'd be a... A, a, a brat who wants to vape and have a cell phone <laughs> and a learner's license. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got the office for a festival and not a human. <laughs> and two chihuahuas and a cat, not real kids. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that um, like distribution deals and licensing deals and all that kind of stuff in terms of actually getting the rights to stream movies at the festival. Yeah. Has that kind of been a little bit easier now that it's digital or is it still... Um, I mean, not I, really, I, because now it's, it's always sorry. sounded like a lot of work. No, it is. It mm. is. Um, the thing is, with, with the regular festival, it's kind of less of a hassle because you have the movie, you put it on your drive, you take it there, and you screen it. And it's in one location. That's where it screens. Yeah, but you still, that. you still have to secure the rights no, to, no, to no, do no, that. But, but, but what I mean yeah. now, shifting to to digital and online, like half of the movies are geo locked just for Africa. So you can't see it. If you go online outside of Africa, you won't be able to see those. But that's why we added the Global Horror Fest. Um, like half half the lineup you can access outside, well, in Africa and beyond. Yes. Um, yeah. Because those, those guys said, it's cool. I mean, it's, it's screened at other festivals. They've been distributed here and there. So cool. They, they want people to see their movies. So they want people all around the world to see the movies. So they said, then screen across the whole festival for the whole world. Yeah. Which is... Very, very cool. But uh, in terms of the Films and Publication Act, um, uh, putting new legislation or drafting new legislation, it, it's definitely going to become trickier, more tricky to. Mm. Uh, there's much more regulations around the ability, having the ability to screen also, things. Also, the extent to which they think they can regulate it, like yes. every single YouTube upload must go. Yes. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's, it's untenable, and it's it's not a it's, it's not, not a sustainable. Um, I think uh, yeah. So I think the whole thing around um, screening things the right way is you're really jumping through a whole lot of hoops to get the proper rights from the people that make the movies and the, the distribute them to, sh- to screen yes. them um, and uh, and then you have to deal with um, with government restrictions as well so mm. it does make it a little bit harder to do things um, the right way which we, we've always wanted to we've always do our best to but, uh, um, to do things but another another kind of well a huge obstacle especially in back in when we got started was when you contact a distributor or a filmmaker or producer to screen their movie, besides still having to get it from them, then it was a case of that you mail you the DVDs, will it get you, or Blu-ray. Yes. <laughs> so now they just upload it, which is much quicker and easier. <laughs> but then they can still be issued with, with the files. When they get there, it can be corrupted like we've had yeah. with some of them. And yeah. yeah, we won't get into that again. <laughs> but now sometimes what happened and still happens is when they 
when the movie, when they, they uh, assigned an agent to, to sell their movie, you know, they have the, the company has the festival on, so they contact every single festival under the sun and say, hey, yes. check out the movie. And you go, well, I'd like to see that. And they say, yeah, but it's like 1,000 euros for a screening or 500 euros, or $500. And it's, yeah. that's what you need to do, especially with a physical festival. You've got X amount of people you can fit into the cinema. The rand exchange with yes. the euro, the pound, the dollar. <clears throat> Yeah, it's just completely um, impossible. <laughs> so for the most part, um, the guys—they're very, very cool. They—they—they they, they want people to see the movie that wouldn't have the chance to get to see the movie. Yeah, so they tell us it's cool. They worry about any fees, but then sometimes other guys, you know, they put a lot of money into the movie, which yeah. we respect, and we know they have to make back yes. that money. Um, we kind of negotiate a percentage, or you know, it's. Mm. It's, there's so many different options and variables and how to do it. Um, yeah. So we just try to do it without bankrupting ourselves, but also not to, to screw <laughs> the filmmakers. Okay. Yeah. It's, not a, it's, not a cheap, it's not a cheap hobby, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially it's something that we want to support and nurture and, and see grow and develop. So mm. we, are, yeah. <laughs> we want to play along as best as we can. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, the, the, I think the first time I interviewed you, um with a friend of mine uh you spoke about uh because i asked you about we asked you about why it is that you run the festival and you one of the answers you said was um you would like the sense of creating a community so you know that like there are some people who like sort of edgier movies and sort of slightly darker subject matter and not like the normal also but also like the the more predictable sort of hollywood horror movie where it's like uh, yeah, yeah. You know, the, it's the same storyline over and over, basically, or it's a remake of an older film. Yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think we also wanted to. We, it all started when when Paul um, made a little movie, and and it was a uh, starring Sonia. It was a horror movie, and we had no way to screen it. And I think that was mm. sort of the the chrysalis of the whole thing. Uh, now. We um, love seeing South African content making it to us, and and it's so great to see um, like a movie like Fright um, Barry and um, some of the, uh, the the other unfamiliar, mm. you know, people that are South Africans that have really um, excelled at at making well in the genre, which is very very dif difficult to do. Mm. Um, that was the sort of the chrysalis of the whole thing was to um, create a platform and 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 also the community, which is which is uh, I find being sort of more on the alternative side. There's there's not a lot for us um, to participate in. We don't get represented like other people get represented. So we wanted to uh, provide that uh, representation and and we still do. And I think that's uh, this plays a huge part. Yeah. In why we've sort of been very stubborn and we've sort of uh, continued to to do the festival and, and every year we've 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 tried to to, to grow it. Um, yeah. And I mean this year is is great because it's a good test for us mm. to see um, how it's going to turn out um, doing streaming it and what that creates is the ability to um to widen the circle so to speak mm -hmm. with with the ability for other people to see it so um this is a great opportunity and there's been so much innovation around this whole covid thing everyone's had to sort of innovate the hell out of everything mm. Um, Zoom, for instance. Yes. yes. So, so going forward, I mean, going forward, I, I almost want to say that we will probably have an element of, of yeah, streaming. It will. It will be part of it. It will. Be, it will be part of our festival, e even though yeah. we have a physical festival. Yeah. We will. This is just another branch of enabling yeah. us to to grow it even more. Also, yeah. just the plain fact that our festival is in Cape Town, and yeah, you know. Even people in Johannesburg, if some, I mean, some people have actually flown down for it, but you know, not everyone can do that. Well, and I mean, let's let's be honest. Everyone... This is Cape Town, yeah. so that, let's be honest. This is Cape yeah. Town, so there are even people from a different suburb, one suburb over, who can't make it all of the way course. to the festival. It's too but far. Absolutely, I didn't want to say that though, because we are from here. So. Yeah, I know, but it, it's still true. 
Yeah, and it's actually it's fine. We no, did yeah. it. I mean, if, if I would stay home and do nothing, I'm going to stay home and do exactly, nothing. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do, we do find that we've got our crowd, and we we have our like you guys. I mean, we have our support. Yeah, you've been there like from yeah, second, think, the second one from the second like year. Yeah. Month, as it related to you and, and Candy, and Candy, and, Candy Bracken and, and um, Andres, Andres, mm-hmm. yes. Um, so there are a couple of people who've been there like for 16 years. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just the ones we know. But I mean, yeah. I, you see the familiar faces mm. every year. And, and, yeah. and it has grown every year. It has it, it's yeah. become bigger and bigger. But it also hasn't gotten too big for itself. It's, it's, it's grown, but it's still nice and cozy. Yes. Yeah. That way. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. It, I mean, it's... it's... If, if it's going to be a case of we're now going to run it at... At a at mall cinemas in in every province. No, it'll kind of it won't have that vibe. It at will all. definitely lose its um its uh, bespokeness and character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we actually have our... also because it, we, we also it is it is a very niche it is a niche genre although mm. everyone watches horror movies for, for different reasons, and people always ask us why horror movies. I mean, you know, it's. Yeah. You can go into the psychology of it. It's you know, it's just, you like weird entertainment. It's you know, everyone has their reason, and I'm not going to question that. If you want to watch a horror movie, hey, yeah. enjoy it. It's cool. So we actually have a uh, an audience question. So, um, have you from? It's, this is from uh, Tardy, Tardy's Tardis. Um, has the, have you seen any appetite for Nollywood horror? There are lots of um, zombie, vampire, and witchcraft pulp shows coming from there. Um, and obviously, you know, just so, sourcing sourcing content is always uh, uh, an onerous task. But have you have you looked into that at all? We haven't. The closest we got was uh, when did Ziba Khan? I was it two thousand and eight. It was the first Pakistani gore movie they they said i mean there was there's no dancing and stuff in there so it wasn't yeah and then kalu kalu was, was from, from india yeah but nollywood a... is referring to oh, nigeria, Nolly... nigeria sorry i'm saying we... bollywood in my head now yeah. sorry. <laughs> we had um we've had entry we, we this year we actually had an an entry that i would have loved to have um included yeah, yeah it is, but we but have the, so many movies to go to, yeah. and eventually you have to start chopping down the, the for various problem, reasons. The problem is, is Paul and I are sticklers for for um for like just production value, and I and I mm. and I understand how difficult what goes into something like that. And we've we've really got a very cool one um, this year from from Nigeria, which we won. We would have loved to, but but, but when it came to start chopping the the, the short list, it was just. You know, yeah. it, it has to tick X amount of boxes, mm. and then if it just falls short in, uh, you know, even if, if it just falls short, then unfortunately we have to throw things out because it's just there's just so many movies. That yes. we, we've got five short film chapters this year, and we of, of two yes. hours each, so and we've got ten hours of short films, and we had to throw out about twenty five. And hours. we can't we can't wow. be guided by our own personal choices mm. because that would be unfair to everyone that submitted a movie. We have to be guided by our set of criteria mm. and by other panel members, and. It it is hard to see a, a short that you you really rooting for. It's hard to see that falling yeah. out the window. But I'm hoping I'm hoping that we get more from yeah. from them because they do. The one that we received was actually I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was brilliant. Um, but it just didn't it just didn't make the the the, the mark. I mean, there were other movies that are actually you know f- movies that you could probably look and say there's there's nothing wrong with this movie, yes. but then. It's just different factors of, mm. you know, the running time. We can only fit two hours into each chapter, and if if there's space for another five minute movie, and then this one is half an hour long, it's yeah, you know, so what, try and shift it around. It, it's it's a it's a task in itself. Just mm. watching all these movies, all these submissions across months, yeah, and then to select them takes ages, and then to arrange them into these five chapters takes another 
another stretch. And then you have to compile them and send yeah. them off to the streaming yeah. service. To answer your, your, your viewers' question, we would love to get more from Nollywood because we would love to include more stuff from the African from continent. Everywhere. I mean, mm. this year we've, we've, we've had such a breadth of, um, of some submissions. We, we had from Myanmar, we've had from Tunisia, from Iran, Kuwait, Kuwait Turkey, Brilliant, brilliant. Malaysia. Malaysia, I think I said, yeah, brilliant uh, uh, little films. And they really had lots of them. They've got legs. Eh? They can, and, they and can like, go the distance. Like we, and we, got missed, like we got contacted like the ones from Myanmar and Iran. We get these broken English heartfelt emails from these guys saying, you know, they, they don't have stuff like PayPal, so they can't submit their movie via one of these uh, mm. submission services we use. What, what can they do? So we still want just to send us the movie, don't worry about it. But then there's also a case of the internet gets cut off. Yes. If they, you know, yeah. it's like police states and stuff that they're dealing with. And so we really have sympathy mm. for these guys. And these movies were actually brilliant. Cool. We didn't, brilliant. it wasn't just a case of, well, we put them in there because no, it's we not a, sorry it's for It's not them. a pity, but they, they stood up mm. um, okay. yeah. very well against stuff from Germany, France, uh, the mm. USA. And it's tough. Everywhere. It's tough criteria. It's tough criteria. It's not. It's not an easy task I mean, to yeah. select these. I don't, I, mean, I, think, I don't know if people sometimes think because we're we're a little a little South African festival that we just we'll just throw anything in there. No. I mean, we, yeah. We we take our time and we and we select only the very very best ones. Yeah. And I mean, there are a lot of rules um, that we that we also touch. We are very um, passionate about. Preferably no animals in, in, in your video. You must be able to prove that no animal got hurt in your in your yeah. submission. There was actually this year, there was a, a video that, that I instantly disqualified because I wasn't feeling comfortable with with um with the action in the movie. Not not that any creature got hurt, but it was just it didn't even pass that mark with me. Um, and we we do um, keep to our own regulations and criteria. We stick very, very, very tightly to them um, okay. because, yeah. So when it comes to the short films, what is the one criteria that you think people find it hardest to hit? Like what's, obviously like there's there's a certain level of production value that, you know, if you understand kind of what a, what a, Competently made yeah, film looks an, like an original, an original, an original story, probably because um... mm. yeah, yeah, it's it's insane how many um how many submissions you get, and it's the production value stands up, the acting stands up, but the the writing, uh, we we it just you can't it doesn't make any sense. You can't put it, you can't select it. Um, but the, I think in terms of the, the production value is a big thing and, and also horror genre. We do get submissions that, that the movie is beautifully made, it, the acting is brilliant, but there's just not enough horror in it for it for us to justify it being in, but in, we, in the but festival. We, but we also try to we also have to balance that. You yes. can't just have a gore face no, no, no. wall to wall. So we, we do try and put more subtle stuff in, yeah. just like with the feature films, like the woman from the photograph. People would go, this isn't a horror movie, but you know, it's more goes into psychological stuff so we, yes. we try and at least uh, balance it out there's one or two shorts that's like far out man it <laughs> is like <laughs> are they from out. spain but, no usually <laughs> <laughs> but about nick killer Oh, Nicola. Nicola. Japanese. From, from it's a, a Japanese. Japanese director. And it, it is just so far out, but but it was selected for its absolute far outness. It, because <laughs> I've never seen anything. Um, and we rarely get stuff from Japan. So it was very yes, cool to get something from Japan as well. Amazing okay. to get something from Japan. Yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. It's And, you know, it's just when you watch it and you go, well, that's so people will see that. So it, sometimes <laughs> it's not a case of, okay, this point, that point, that point. There's just an overall, yeah, okay, we. This this must be seen. Yes. So there are lot, there are many of those. Um, yeah. And obviously we 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 root for people from the continent. We root for people from yeah, South we, Africa. Hmm. It, or it's, Africa. Or Africa. Even uh, you know we we like to get submissions from um, from places that we don't normally get. Hmm. It's amazing when hmm. we get them, and it's, it's a privilege to get them. Yeah. Okay. Um... So there was there were a couple of other questions. Um, so I'm gonna there's there's one question I want to leave for the sort of near the end, um, but uh, just in terms of like the 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 
the admin and the selection process, what do you think is the least re rewarding, most grindiest part of of the festival for, for the two of you? Social media. Social media. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you. Um, I, I, I like the fact that you added the whole uh, YouTube playlist with all the trailers in one place for this year. I actually yeah. spent a good part of my morning pre preparing for this interview, watching all of them in a row. And that was like probably like there's, there's an hour. Missing, there's, there's still some more coming, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, there's still, I mean, there are over 40 freaking titles this year. So there's still a couple of trailers missing, but yeah, there's, it's a marathon to go through. Yeah, but it was fun though. I mean, you did get a. I did very much get a, that sense of like this. Okay, here's a range of things, and you can you can tell. Okay, this one I'm gonna find interesting. That one's like maybe I'm gonna skip that one. But um, yeah, like just no, in terms we, of like we, we admin, yeah, I think I think that just that I think Paul has been. I sort of I think my biggest role is just keeping Paul um, going. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's constantly, constantly editing, but it, it's, it's definitely a labor of love. Eh? I, I, even though we had some aspects of it, yeah. Um, and this year almost feels like it's um, it, this year almost feels like ah, oh, you know, you're not going to get that um, gratification of being at the festival and and chatting to people and for six movies. Yeah, for six movies, but I mean, not that whole big festival vibe. And, and I always find that, you know, at least there's a payoff yeah. <laughs> when we have the festival, is you meeting new people and handing out prizes. and, well, like and off, After the live soundtrack performance. It's always so much fun. And, and, and that, to me, has always been sort of the payoff for all the, the, mm. the grafting that we do. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's another thing as an, a lead up to it that is not always pleasant is the creating the live soundtrack for the sound oh, form. Yeah. Because we usually, we don't have, we, we just never get time to do it like six months ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, well, just, we just, people who don't know about this, we, we our group, the Macabre Ensemble, we um, create a new soundtrack to a classic silent form, like Nosferatu, can you see him there? I, <laughs> I have that shirt still. Yeah. Yay! Um, you know, the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, the hunchback of Notre Dame, Phantom of the Opera, uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, we've done uh, Metropolis. Vampire. Vampire, we've done the Phantom Carriage. Machiste. Machiste in Hell. Yeah, uh -huh. we've done over a dozen um, Titles, yeah. uh, classic silent films. So we, in our group, it's Sonia and myself um, from Terminatrix and our drummer Ronnie mm -hmm. and Simon Ratcliffe and Sean Oatem and Matthijs van Dijk. And everyone, we distribute the movie, chop it up in scenes, give everyone a piece to to create a soundtrack for that. And then we never get to rehearse. We all get together on the night that we're performing it live under the big screen, and then we go. <laughs> yeah. And I th that's also part, I think that's also part of when you say admin. I almost thought, it, and it's a pity, because mm -hmm. that is such a fantastic opportunity to be so creative, but I'm always pressed for time, uh, time is always in, the issue. in October, especially because... I've also been um, writing exams for the last five, uh, five years every October. Wow. And it, it is just, it is insane. I mean, I think the closest I've come to a, an actual nervous breakdown was before before one of those performances. Yeah. But but it's, uh, it, it, it is... It's always worth it mm. at the end when you when you have the, when when you see that people really enjoyed it and you did something different and you did mm. something that doesn't happen often. And you know that the people they they're waiting the whole year they're waiting for, for, for this. this. That's some yeah. people, that's the only that's the only thing they attend at the horror fest and they really look forward to. Yeah, and that's it's their Halloween event. We like people yeah. dress up for Halloween then as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which we will now do. People must go post their Halloween outfits on our uh, Facebook group, not the Facebook page. We've got a South African Horror Fest Facebook group as well. Yes. People okay. go there, post their Halloween outfits there, and we'll give some prizes to the cool ones. <laughs> okay. Since we can't all get together at the library with the live soundtrack and pick the winners there. Yeah. So how, people will be the, dressing up. So, yeah, I mean, the, the live events, like the live uh, performance of the Silent Movie and the Rocky Horror uh, group participation screening have been big hits. Mm -hmm. And they're obviously sort of... Yeah. They kind of built into the whole idea of the festival. Like you go there and you're 
hanging out with a bunch of people who are also doing something kind of a little bit out there, like dressing up yeah. as as Rocky Horror characters in 2020 is is a bit of an yeah. odd thing to still be doing. Uh, <laughs> and and it's also it's also cool because people who wouldn't who wouldn't normally do that they have an excuse to go do that. Yeah, it's a Rocky Horror Picture Show. So. Yeah, I mean that is probably the most fun you'll have in your life. <laughs> it, it it really is. Even well, I know we did a shadow cast once, and I I swear. It is in my top ten moments of the most fun that I've ever had in my life. It was so so amazing, mm. um, and I think this year there's going to be a big, there's going to be a big like gap. Uh, Although yeah, with the there won't be any Rocky Horror, but there is um, a Rocky Horror documentary, Rocky Horror, Rocky Horror Forty Five, because it's forty five years since the movie. It's crazy. Yeesh. I was five years old when they made the movie. I was a year old. <laughs> Wow. So we, we on on November the first, um, we're screening this documentary at the Library Theatre. So people can, we're not telling them not to dress up. They can dress up, but obviously there won't be any rice throwing and yeah. <laughs> stuff like that. But you know, it'll take it, it takes you across the whole thing with interviews with cast and crew, people from conventions at special Rocky Horror events. Wow. So it digs into the whole phenomenon. But you mentioned that it's an underground docking. Yeah, it's, a, it's an underground docking, yeah. so it's not a, like a... Official. Yeah. yeah. But it's made with love by... A, by, by a super hardcore fans. fan. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, which is what you need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I mean, how... Uh, so, which, which, which of the movies are going to be actually showing uh, at the lobby of Okay, let's let's, let's yeah, access the memory bank. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to look at the laptop. I'm trying to remember. Sonia, Sonia can correct me. <laughs> okay, we have uh, uh, Thursday evening. We have a special pre-release screening of Antebellum, brand new movie that's starting. Mm -hmm. So you can go watch that at the library at 8:30 on Thursday the 29th. You can see it before everyone else. And then Friday the 30th, we have Friday Barry. Locally made movie by Ryan Kruger, mm -hmm. but that one is sold out. Oh wow! So we added an extra screening, added an extra screening week later for uh, Saturday the seventh. Okay. So you can go to Quicket and, and well, all these all these tickets are on Quicket at our South African Horror Fest uh, uh, profile. But then yeah, so if you still want to see Fried Barry in the cinema, you can get your tickets at the library for the seventh Saturday the seventh of November. And then, yeah, like I said, November 1st on Sunday is the Rocky Horror documentary. Mm -hmm. Then we have Sky Sharks. Oh, <laughs> looks amazing. On, on Friday the 6th. Uh. <laughs> I guess I, I just describe it as Iron Sky meets Frankenstein's Army meets Sharknado. Yeah. So you cannot go wrong. It is fabulous. <laughs> it is. Zom zombie I Nazis flying, <laughs> flying genetically. I'm in love with this film. And I think to see it on, on the big screen is, is the way to go, for sure. Oh, wow, yeah. Zombie life is flying genetically mutated sharks <laughs> and destroying stuff in the air. Hey. So, <laughs> so that is on, that is Friday the 6th um, okay. of November. And then that will only be screening for two days. So it'll, it'll screen at the cinema on the Friday. And then Saturday the 7th and Sunday the 8th, it will be streaming. But just mm. for that, that weekend. And then, then it's done. So you have to grab if you don't see it in the cinema, you have to grab it online. Okay. And then we have um, the Sunday after that. Uh, what would that date be, Sonia? Sunday the. We have it's a it's actually world it's premiere. The eighth. Mm? It's the eighth. No, no, of November. Oh, of November. Yeah, the eighth of November is the Sunday. No, no, I mean the, the Sunday of. Oh no, it's the eighth. Yeah. Okay, so last year the last house on the left documentary was screened okay. on Sunday the eighth. Of, of November, it's a it's a world premiere of the documentary. The oh, reason, wow, okay. and it's only screening it's only screening in the cinema because the German company has put it together. Um, Callum Waddle, it's a is a documentary filmmaker and scholar. He's screened loads of his movies. He was actually at the festival when we did his Forty Second Street Grind Grindhouse documentary. Um, he did a little lecture at at SAE Institute. So yeah, okay. he's done this new documentary on the Last House on the Left called. The last word on the last house on the left. Oh yes, so it digs into it digs into the whole phenomenon and how the movies that it inspired and the controversy of it. Um, mm -hmm. But now because this is this is only um, 
the German company that, that financed it, they're not allowed to screen anything online because of various rights. They're only allowed to do physical screenings. Okay. So this movie will be a world premiere and one screening only at the lobby, not online at all. Yeah, so it's super, super exclusive. Um, <laughs> fans of, of, of Wes Craven should actually make an effort yeah. to check this one out. Um, okay. And also, it looks at the, the remake that they shot in South Africa. Yes. Um, I think by 2009, they did that. Um, yeah. I actually wrote a Fangora article on it. I did a set visit. Um, but then the last movie, um, you, won't, you can't buy tickets for this one. It is on yeah. the 14th of November. No, no, the, the 12th of November. Yes. Thursday, okay. the 12th of November, just before the, just before the end <laughs> of the festival. Uh, Freaky. It's, uh, people old enough will remember Freaky Friday with... Um, oh, wow. Uh, what's Clarice's name? Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. Oh, Clarice. wow. Clarice. Um, she she was in that of the seventies, you know, the swap the swap with the mom. Yes, yes. Like a, a body a body swap, a body swap comedy. Oh yeah. And then they did a remake with Jamie Lee Curtis and that other chick that's always in trouble. Um, uh, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. They did a remake with them, <laughs> but now Blumhouse has done a remake. Oh wow. But a horror comedy remake with a young girl that switches body with a male serial killer. So. That's freaky. So we're going Good to do. Lord. We're going to do a competition. We're going to. <laughs> we're going to do a competition with this. So if you've watched a movie at the horror fest, and obviously if you can make it to Cape Town and Johannesburg, it'll only be in Cape Town and Joburg. Okay. Uh, our friends at UIP, our friends at UIP made this happen. Um, so if you watch any horror fest movie and you're in Joburg or Cape Town, we'll we'll post info on that on the on the Facebook page and all over the place. You can. Jump in there and then get to see this before it gets released. Um, I'm not sure how long before, but it's it's before the official release of the movie. Nice. Um, those are the cinema screenings. Yes. Okay. Man. Not to go. <laughs> I, I only, yeah, but I only got the one date wrong. Yeah. No, I didn't get it wrong. No, I just, you, you, you did it well. You had to check. Last house. You had to check. You did well. I just looked at the eight of... It's, I looked at one. Yeah. Seven, uh, five out of six and bad. No, it's, it's pretty good. So another question from uh, mm. someone who sent in a qu uh, sent something in is, how do you start again uh, with fresh eyes every year? Because obviously, like watching watching horror movie after horror movie, you know, it 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 can sort of get yeah. a bit grindy. You know, yes, I think if I if I see um, a movie starting with someone strapped into a chair with duct tape over their mouth and a, like a table Skip. with instruments, torches. I want to die. <laughs> but, um, but what I always say is, wait, maybe these guys are not going to put a spin on it, which sometimes happens, but then sometimes... Uh... Uh, it, but I must say, it, it, it's, we always get inspiring stuff. It's amazing. It, mm. Filmmakers come up with ideas that you wonder what the hell inspired these people <laughs> and also we do have a couple of months to to recover in between yeah um and because we're horror fans we, yeah, we, we we're always we hungry it. for we're always hungry for for it so it's easy and it's to and start it's, and, it's and it's exciting when you see okay these guys submitted this movie and it's freaking cool yes so yeah I mean, and also besides besides just regular movies we also get Horror related documentaries like like the last house on the yes, Death. and the, yes. the Deadites movie as yeah, well. Yeah, we've got we've got Hail, Hail to the Hail Deadites, to the Deadites. Mm -hmm. which is about not about the Evil Dead, but about the Evil Dead fans. fans. Yeah, it's a, incredible. It's incredible. You get so much insight into how big a fan base exists around such a little mm. cult film that was made on a shoestring budget and turned into. A, TV series, which is even more gory than, <laughs> than that. Yeah, if we watched one episode with Ashes in the Morgue, where this guy uh -huh. ends up oh, dear. Uh -huh. oh, it's ridiculous. I <laughs> it's love that series. I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's the thing with, you know, half the time horror is comedy because it's, mm. it's so outrageous. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, if you, you either laugh because you're nervous or you laugh because they did it purposely. Purposefully. Yeah. Like Mutant Blast. It, it's just gory, hilarious, crazy. I mean, you, you you basically end up with a with a, a giant human sized lobster fighting with a with a samurai dolphin on the <laughs> beach. It's and insane. Guys <laughs> punching heads off like. But yeah, sorry, I digress now from yes. from talking about documentaries. Um, no, no, we were talking so about. We've, 
Yeah. Yeah. And then it turned into the evil day. <laughs> um, but we find the, the last house on the left documentary that's only showing at the library. Yeah? We've got the Hail to the Deadites, which is about the evil dead fans. We have Clapboard Jungle, which is made by Justin McConnell, Canadian filmmaker. Um, his movie, uh, he's screened quite a few movies at our festival across the year. So we've had mm -hmm. good contact with him over the years. Um, and so he made a documentary on making movies. Okay. Or struggling to make movies. Yeah, especially yes. in the genre. To make horror movies. And um, so he he was hesitant to do this, but then he you know sh shot footage of himself going to all these festivals and conventions. And you, know, you have all these initiatives in, in Canada, like the Fantasia Festival, where they have special filmmaker uh, meetings where people can chat to distributors and see how they can improve that movie or what people actually want to buy it. So, but then, yeah, so we're screening that. So that is particularly for anyone who is interested in making movies, whether you want to be a filmmaker <laughs> or you're just interested in the process. Watching yeah. that, it's, it's fantastic. It's got, it's got interviews with Ah oh, man, lists from Guillermo del Toro to Richard Stanley, also Rich. like lenses uh, oh, yeah. in that. So one. African Richard Stanley's in there. Mick and, and this actually connects very much with with the, the question about looking at things with fresh eyes. I think the moment you realise the sacrifices that people make hmm. to to get something to screen, you have so much respect for it. You really do. Yeah. Um, and, and a movie like that just is an illustration of, of the struggles of... And of, people, you, you expect that in the States or in Canada, it's, it's easier, but it's it's not. It's you not. Just, you actually have so much so much more of a... Competition. Of a competition base that you need to kind of yeah. fight through. And it's hectic. And we have, um, which other documentaries do we have? Um, come on, Sonia. The Horror Oh, crowd. The Horror the crowd. crowd. The one that's only... Six hour window on <laughs> Halloween night. So, on Halloween night, if you want to watch the horror crowd, uh, Saturday, 31st of October, 6 pm to 12 pm, South African time, of course. <laughs> but it's also geo also geo for Africa, so you can't watch it outside of Africa. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Jeez, that's, that's, that's well, I exclusive, that's, I tell you. It's very exclusive. Uh, and also, the, very the, insightful. Yeah, insightful. Because the, yeah. the, the director made that, that is, that's sort of going into the, 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 the Los Angeles, California, Hollywood kind yeah. of. Um, horror flick, if you would. So it's people who made the Sharknado movies, who made the mm -hmm. Paranormal Activity movies, who made the Conjuring. Uh, the uh, what's the one with the with the airplane? Uh, the um, that come on, I can't remember. Like, that, that follows them. That the, oh, the the, the, the um, death. What the? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, the movie Final that. Destination. Final Destination. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Final Destination. <laughs> So filmmakers of all these big franchises talk about, um, and some smaller movies as well, but um, mm. some very interesting perspectives on, you know, just making movies and making interesting and cool and weird movies that you want. And uh, Darren Lynn Bozeman, that uh, I think he made three or four of the Saw movies. That's right. So all oh, those, yes. and um, Lynn Shay, Lynn Shay, who is in, um, man, she's in most of those Blumhouse movies in the, in the insidious movie. Insidious, that's right. So okay. The woman with the yes. She's in there. So there's lots of very, very cool interviews of people talking about, you know, it's also a case of it's a job, but they also love it and yeah. you know, sort of advice on what people can do, what they should avoid. Just, it's very cool to watch that. I, I love all kinds of movies, just like Sonia, <laughs> um, documentaries as well. So we like, you know, when you get just that little bit of a different spin on the horror thing, that's always very cool. For Interesting, us. yes. Sure, there's another documentary. Scroll, Sonia, scroll. <laughs> well, well, the movies there wasn't there. a question ah, about there, there wasn't this. a question about documentaries, just by the way, just so no, you know. No, <laughs> but he, he wants to get it in though. It's not it's not exactly a documentary, um or a mockumentary or a homage. Um mm -hmm. it's a movie called The Great Buddha. What is it? Uh, the yeah, the, it's it's sort of a I would almost say it's it's the origin of the big monster moving the yeah. Great Buddha arrival. It's like the, the, there's kaiju movies from there's Japanese kaiju movies with Godzilla and all of those big monsters. And um, this movie sort of tells a story on how this actually uh, uh, came to life. Where in the cities, this giant Buddha. There's a story that this giant Buddha got up and travelled across and Japan. Walked, yeah. Um, yeah. And 
there was a film made of it which got lost so these guys are kind of recreating this film and interviewing f- family members of the director who's film it and it's just so different and interesting and weird and cool and, and there's also so, another yeah. there's also another um a film that is not completely a, a documentary the truth will the truth will what is it called the truth will out yeah the truth like, will out it's like um, a it's like a reality show a mockumentary mockumentary kind of, well fake like found footage type yes uh, but this uk this uk tv personality that goes into the streets of of the U, of london and sort of interviews interesting people so he ends up in this kind of a not really a coven but these people witches with spells and stuff and obviously things start yes. start going wrong yes. so yeah that's not like a docu but it's a fake docu yes. ah <laughs> that is it tales of the uncanny the reason i forget this um is because we literally squeeze that in at the last minute um it's a documentary on the anthology horror films from way back when they made them like with peter cushing and all those old classic horror actors you know like and it turned into creep show and tells on the dark side um so it's um the guys from seven films um they re-release all these classic old movies um restore them and re-release them um david gregory they it was during this covid disaster that they ended up doing these zoom uh, interviews as an extra feature on on one of the movies they released i think it's the theater bazaar which is an anthology movie which which is stanley also did one and i think tom savini did one in there so they did this just to do some interviews to chat about anthology horror films and they just kind of exploded into a extensive thing with people from eli roth to mick garris and richard sandy again yeah it's just a whole bunch of um horror experts chatting about these movies and what it means to them and the ones that they like i think joe dante's in there as well the director of gremlins irana yeah so it's a whole bunch of filmmakers directors and guys talking about anthology horror tales of the uncanny that's the last documentary i want to jock us on the way jock you there Mm-mm. jock Did you abandon us or did Facebook cut us off? I think Jacques went for a slash. You heard me waffling. Oh, no, no, no. I'm still here. Sorry, my mic was just muted. <laughs> I didn't want to, I, you were in such a stride. I didn't want to you know, interrupt. You warned you, I warned you. I warned you. When I started waffling, it could take a while, but then I stopped I waffling. Sensed, I sensed the moment you got up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it was fine. It was I can I can understand why you were trying to get to that last that last one because that sounds like quite a fun uh movie but because I always always feel that you know we 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 mention stuff and you go oh I should have mentioned this but there's never never enough time like tomorrow yeah. I'm going on Cape Talk with with Pippa Hudson for we're going to have probably like 15 minutes 10 oh. minutes if you're lucky yeah so I'm going to have to <laughs> pick out the highlights but there's so many highlights how do you you know how do you pick so yeah So on that on that subject of picking picking highlights um mm. Ariet sent in a question uh so she'd like to know from each of you your picks for the best and worst horror movies of all time <laughs> that's, that's that's a steep Marie, that's a steep do one do this to us? <laughs> the obvious my obvious favorite is the shine yeah i think that's my easy one. for me i I, I agree with Paul. It's shining definitely. Anything Stephen King really. But the book is better than the movie. I, I'm more they didn't a, stick. They didn't stick to the book. I'm more of a horror reader than a than a than than enjoy, well enjoy the films. For me, I love the Insidious franchise. I think it's brilliant. Okay. I think it is so scary. It is so scary. It it sort of revived the whole idea about um, a, a proper ghost story. And from a different angle, from the from the from the perspective of of the of the ghost, yeah. also, which made it very very interesting. I um the paranormal franchise uh, freaked me out entirely. Yeah. Um, as it, it reminded her of some her own experiences that she's had. So as a yeah, as close a, to home. As a child, I I I must say that my probably one of my favorite movies was It, 
um, both the mini series, both for the love of Stephen King, okay. but also for the love of um, Tim Curry. Uh, oh right, yeah. Tim Curry knowing him from the Rocky Horror Picture Show from a very young age, hmm. um, and just seeing him <laughs> in so juxtaposed to you know these two characters like Dr. Frankenfurter and then and then Pennywise. That to me was incredible as a as a very young person. Yeah. The worst form. I've got two categories of 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 bad films or, or, or movies. I, I don't. Don't appreciate um, uh, like a, a movie like a Cannibal Holocaust, which I that is I, word, yeah. I, I would say that thing should be scratched from existence. Yeah, it's a it's a smudge on horror. Films, it it so. really is, and and I mm. think um, many of those video nasties, I think. Um, it just it completely exploited the idea of um, you know the slasher film and. Um, yeah. And the, the the just the destruction of of women, and and mm. I, I know it sounds like a very sort of me too thing to say now, but even as a young um, girl, I didn't appreciate that. So mm. that for me, uh, it's not it's not intelligent. It's not intelligent. Any anyone can make that film. You can you can you can hurt an animal. You can you can uh, simulate chopping a woman up. It's easy. Um, I, I appreciate stuff that's made with with some some intelligence, and, okay. and Marie, that would be my my answer. Yes. Okay, I agree. Yeah, yeah, the definitely. Um, I, it's always difficult for me to think of worse because every movie has a little something about it. <laughs> the only thing yeah. Cannibal Holocaust had going for it is that. It was like probably the first found footage movie, which turned into a ridiculous subgenre that just blew itself out of proportion. Yeah. But just you know, gratuitous killing of animals on screen. Yeah. Fuck off. Nothing for that. No, so, I've, yeah. I've absolutely no respect for that, and I think people like that should be um, they should be criminally um, pursued. Yeah, but you know, it's made in the seventies, and it's and, and, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Those seventies nasties, those video na nasties, um, and then also, so I, how can I leave this out? Probably my most memorable um, horror film would be the, the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Even though some of them were, you know, a bit lackluster, the the, 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 the ones one. the ones that were made well, um, yeah. made up for for ones that were like crappy. <laughs> <laughs> I love Freddy. I adore him. <laughs> and now the joke is Freddy is a child. Yeah, molester, but so, I mean, yeah. But you know, it's fiction. It's so. fiction. Yeah. If you now make a movie with a real child molester, so that's a different story. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I suppose another sort of question on this, along the same lines: um, in a zombie apocalypse, which horror movie hero or villain would you support and would have your back? Do you think? Ooh. Um, sure. You first tell us yours. Um. I would definitely have to go with Ash. Ash, yeah, he, Ash. He'd probably mind. get me um, killed, but he'd probably kill more zombies than innocent <laughs> people. Probably. Sonia's Sonia a bit of a um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, D Daryl. Daryl. Daryl from The Walking Dead. Oh, okay. She's a bit of a Daryl. But for two reasons, because Daryl's like very sexy. And and Daryl <laughs> knows how to use the the, the, the crossbow. Okay. Um, and, and the, and the, Daryl and they know and they know the fans won't let him won't allow him to get killed, so they'll probably never die unless yes. it's the very last episode of the very last season. I can't uh -huh. recall the actor's name. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, dude. That's um, that guy from the Boondock Saints. Yes, Jock, don't you don't you recall his name? Um, anyway, everyone else, well, some type. I'll, Put in the comments. What's? <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Quiz, quiz time! You might win a prize. Mm, <laughs> the what's prize is world? knowledge. Sonia knows his Twitter handle. I'm, I'm on his Twitter. Big, big yeah. Ahead. So, what, oh, wow, okay. That's his Twitter handle, but I, I, I can't remember now. My sister's gonna kill me because she's like literally in love with him. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna kill me that I can't remember his name. Everyone knows him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You um, didn't say anyone. You know, oh. Ash, I reckon. Ash, yeah. yeah, I think if I had Ash and um, and Daryl and my Chihuahua Zoltan with me, I would, I would <laughs> yeah, say. He doesn't yeah. take <laughs> anything or anyone, living or dead. You reckon you'd be fine? Okay. 
Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Norman Reedus, I think. Norman Reedus, my goodness, yes. That was Norman well, Reedus. I say I think, but that's actually my uh, technical uh, advisor oh, in Electron. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you, technical hey, advisor. We, we, we all we all work together to make <laughs> Norman Reedus, yes, to make the magic happen. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what are what is what are some of some of your favorite short films at the festival this year? Because I mean, I mean, obviously you you say that thank there's you. ten hours. Yes. Actually, wait. There is. There's more. Um... There's 14 hours because there are two there are two free short film collections that people can go watch right now. Yes, and they should because it, it, it's a it's really a compilation of, of well not a compilation because we yeah. screen thousands. But I mean it's a it's a it's, we, we, selection of really we nice some cool ones yes, yes. well ones that we liked yeah. okay. from across the festival. Um, so okay, so if you go to frontman.tv slash horrorfest. Scroll down, look through the movies for the, the Shadow Realm short free film collection. The one that says free edition one and free edition two. You okay. can go watch them. Yes. They, are, they are capped at like a couple of thousand views. So if if they're done, they're done. Because obviously it, it costs to stream them. So if we just stream yeah. them indefinitely, it might end up costing <laughs> us to stream it. Yeah. As it relates to, to the, the short films we, we've received and that, that it, it that's really brilliantly made for me a the book would be one the book is brilliantly made in, in france movie. yeah okay um and then also a, a movie a little movie called lily um okay. a, dutch movie. a dutch movie it's just like a single shot uh, single single yes. shot uh, uh, like an audition like a movie audition yes scene. and then the one from tunisia um uh, magnum opus uh, midnight movie magnum opus Mag yeah it is okay. a, it's a it's a it's a very um, cerebral, almost when I say movie, there's not sort of overt, um, it's very suggested, but it, it's brilliantly made. Okay. Um, another interesting one, the one from Malaysia, Cargo. Yes, Cargo, um, brilliantly made. A, a guy and his kid need to go pick up this rock that's in the middle of this um, palm, palm, palm oil, oil plantation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then weird stuff starts happening in the back of the truck, but it's just very well made and very cool. And then the one with the, the, the one that I can never... The kid. The, the two girls, the two girls. Oh, um, um, ab abracitos. 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. Spanish. Actually, scary. Scary. I think one That's of the one shorts of that really gave me such a scrick, a scrick that you, okay. you... When I get a scrick, I get like pins and needles in <laughs> like my fingers and my toes. Yes. Okay. And, and, and that movie gave that to me. And then, okay. I mean, oh, there, there are a couple more. There's... um. Mayor. Mayor is quite good. Yeah, that, that, it's one of those kind of, not, once it's cerebral, but it's visually beautiful and mm. strange, cool, yes. odd, bizarre, but nightmarish. And it's kind of it's about look, nightmare, yes, sleep paralysis. Yes, kind yeah. of thing. It's, it's okay. kind of a, I guess you can say it's experimental. It doesn't have much it's imagery. Yeah, there's not much of a narrative, mm. but I think that um, it, it is like a dream. It really is like a dream. When, when you that watch it, you sort of get you sort of get swept along with it, mm. uh, which which was quite um, it was nice to watch okay. that movie, even though it does have like moments of. And there's one called um, ah, El Artico. Oh. It's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny one with these people with this woman visits her daughter. I mean, her visits her sister, sister yeah. who has this new baby, but this kid is like possessed. But they don't really seem to real. But it's you know, so it's always like cool to have like a funny one. Added yeah, it's well. it's yeah. hilarious, and and I must say the, the the little girl probably, in my opinion, should win a prize for the best actress. Putting these little evil face, she's probably like about like four. Four, not even. Yeah, three, three tiny, four. She's tiny, tiny um, and friend. she's just brilliant. So yeah, there's so many highlights. There's so many cool movies. And then yeah, yeah, there are movies sort of more abstract movies with a guy going into a building. Uh, that's being demolished, and then there's this guy, but I don't want to say anything. Yeah, we don't um, want to give too much away, but I think people should should keep an eye open for the book. It, it really, that to me was brilliant. Um, and for the gory fans, Hospital Dumpster oh, Divers. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh. Hospital Dumpster <laughs> Divers is it's a exactly Danish... exactly how it sounds. It's a Danish movie about a guy starting work in this fraught hospital with, like, stuff where he has to clean up all this uh, medical waste. <laughs> But then he falls into this um, incinerator. incinerated dump, and then this thing starts moving in there, and then things just go 
way off center. Yeah, you know? I think we've got a fantastic spread of hilarious. There's one movie called Smiles uh, that is brilliant, Spanish brilliant. Movie. Yeah, Spanish. Um, it's, so it's just it's, it's bizarre, weird. Yeah. yeah. It's also a far out one, yes. And very original. It's Okay. Something that we've never seen anything like that. No, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. <laughs> well, I mean, considering how many horror movies you watch, that's quite an that's quite a an accolade, right yeah, there. Yeah. It's an achievement for sure. Yeah, that's also now the, the plus of this being online, mm. and for an extended period, is you just you know if you go to the horror fest, your weekend and your week, so we just get this cat here before he <laughs> before he pulls out any cables. Say hello, <laughs> Ming. Here we go. Hi, Ming. Um, so we, um, what was I saying? Um, um, you were talking about. Oh, you can, you can, so now you can, now you can, now you can schedule these things out. I mean, to watch two hours of short films, it's yeah, it is, it is it's a, lot. a lot, and to watch yeah. five two-hour batches of short films at the festival, we've had lots of people like you've done it a few times, mm. where people try and catch as much as they can, but you just physically you can't. Um, oh. So now you know if. if Fresh across the festival, like so tomorrow, um, we want to start with the first volume on the 28th, then on the 29th, the second volume will go live, uh -huh. 50th, the third one. So every day, the, the five volumes will, so people can, we just want to space it out instead of slapping everything down and just freak everyone out. Yeah. yeah. So like those, like those two day fest, two day movies, we kind of stretch them out across mm. the festival so that you don't, so that they don't clash too much yeah. with each other, so you don't have a chance to see something that you really want to see. Um, yeah, so now it's just we urge people if you if you get a full festival pass, you've got two weeks to access most of this stuff. So yeah. do yourself a favor and watch them because we try to when we compile them, we also try to spread it nicely. Yes. Well. And and even if you have a full access pass, pay pay careful attention to the films that's um, available for short windows and, and yeah. watch those. Maybe well, I would suggest watch those first. And the, the posters stipulate Africa. Yes. It's just for Africa Global. If you can see it mm. anywhere, the forty-eight hour time, the three days, yeah. or full the full festival. I, don't, I think the full festival just doesn't mention anything. It means it's available for the full festival. Um, yeah, but I mean that's also. I mean, you were talking earlier about like obviously you're missing out on the idea that you're all in the in the room, and there is that that the different festival yeah. experience of like oh we're all sitting here in this uh, like a weekend. And I've done this kind of thing before. It's like there's a Friday afternoon show, there's a Friday evening show, there are three Saturday shows and three Sunday shows, and you try and go to all of them, and by the end of it, you're like, yeah. I'm not going to watch another You've horror movie that, ever actually. again in my life. It is, it and then is, like, it Monday is, comes along, and then new new week. Yes. Then you, then, you, then, you, then you take a breather and then you go watch some more. Because <laughs> um, yeah, because that's with, usually at the, when we have the full at the lobby theater for the cinema screenings. It's usually about 10 days, a week, 10 days, depending on where Halloween falls. Yeah. We usually try and start it on a Wednesday to this weekend, including the next weekend. Mm -hmm. But this one it crosses like three mm -hmm. weekends. Yes. This and, and people should also keep an eye out for our Shadow Realm uh, literature section. It bloody was, Parchment. Bl sorry, Bloody Parchment. Short films there. Yeah, Bloody Parchment will still go ahead this year. Okay. Um, we want to, we've got the, we got the authors to... To, to shoot them reading because usually they come in and they read from their work. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're compiling some some readings that we will then hoping to have it posted on Halloween day so people can check that out. Just for you know if you want to take a breather from the movies, get some nice. literature in there. And and those are always people. Those are I would almost say underattended. They are brilliant. You you are really missing out on um some crazy stories and some far out people um if you don't attend those. And okay. I think this year, hopefully, we'll get more traction with 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 uh, bloody parchment because um because if we're gonna be um... yeah go beyond it because it was it's usually it's usually also if the when the festival starts on a Wednesday at like six thirty <laughs> for people to get out to the library theater on Wednesday six thirty to yes. to watch some auth local authors read from their work it's yeah. it's a big ask and Nareen Dorman is is um made the compilation for us again yeah. um this year as well okay and the the, the, the the, the short story competition we always compile the best ones for a bit behind this year the, the 2018 best ones have been yeah. revealed and then they get compiled into a a short story book like of, an anthology yes yeah. okay um but I think when, when we were talking sorry i know we're jumping all over the show but there <laughs> that's what this festival is um when we were talking about the macabre ensemble 
the fact that we can't do it this year, um, um, we decided to take Caligari from 2007. Did you yes. say that? I didn't say that, did I? No, 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 we didn't. We shot it because um, this year is Cabinet of the Caligari centenary. The movie's 100 years old, and I think next year Nosferatu's 100 years old. So all of these movies are going to hit. I'm in the grand 100. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll live that long. Um, but uh, so what we did was, since we now can't get together to to perform a soundtrack, we did have cameramen shoot the 2007 Caligari performance at the Labia Theatre. Okay. And we never used it. I, I discovered it on DV tapes, I think, about two years ago. Wow. And then I thought, okay, well, the best thing to do is we're going to put the movie on screen and then have a little a little screen block well not little it's kind of just a bit smaller mm. of the footage of the musicians performing the soundtrack so okay. people can watch that because often you know usually at the often at the festival people end up just watching the musicians and not watching not actually watching the movie especially okay. if they already know the movie because people, most people have seen these old movies so many times <laughs> it's it's a whole different experience with a new soundtrack with pieces written specifically for each scene, as opposed to, you know, when they release these things, they just take a piece of classical music and slap it on and, oh, and yeah. let it run. So, so people like that that unique uh, original factor and yeah, <laughs> uh, bits created specifically for the movie. So we edited, we've got the movie on screen and the, and the uh, musicians performing on screen. Okay. So people watch that from Halloween night. Caligari will also be on on Fright Fan streaming until the end of the festival. Okay. Which is also a case of you can, you can go there, there's one show, you go in, you watch it, it's done. So now people can actually watch it around the world, they can they can check it out. Warts and all. It's been it was I mean, we didn't record it. It's not super studio sound, but it's got it's got good enough sound to hear. So it's off, yep. off the cameras. So you actually have that, that cinema feeling, you'll, you'll hear people coughing <laughs> and or laughing, popcorn. <laughs> eating popcorn, kicking, <laughs> kicking over, because you can take your drinks into the lava theatre. Oh, yeah. You can hear people knocking the bottles and their glasses. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so you, you, you're kind of putting in the cinema. That'll be the closest we can get to putting people inside the cinema for this <laughs> festival if they don't go to the actual screenings at the lava. Um, uh, I have to be honest. Yeah, I, I think, think that's enough. probably the thing I'm going to be least sorry about missing this year. Is the sound of the bottles Lisa. rolling down the down oh, the yes, 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 yes. <laughs> kicking over the bottles, man. That is yeah. like yeah, you can't you, you can't see a, a movie there without that sound. No, people, <laughs> people don't know that the Lama Theater it, it doesn't have stairs, it doesn't have steps with with the seating. It sort of it just slopes down with yeah. the seating. So if someone's bottle goes, it's gonna roll until it hits someone's foot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna keep rolling. Yeah. Um. So uh, you, we mentioned earlier that people are going to be at the, uh, there are going to be some screenings at the lobby itself. So are there any special yeah. arrangements that people should expect for those events or are those the kind COVID of COVID arrangements? Yeah, the normal the normal standard uh, measurements that applies with any public space at this stage no, they'll, in, they'll, will apply with the social distancing. The empty well, the seats will be you can't sit. You will be expected to wear a mask. Um, yeah. You you know the the standard. But if it's uh, Halloween, yeah. just come with your Halloween mask. Yes, sorted. Yeah. <laughs> and and the, the tickets for the, the tickets for the screenings that's going to take place at the lobby can be um, purchased at Wicked. So it okay. would be similar. It will be similar to to, to previous years. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, yeah that's uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, so I mean, but also, I mean, if, if people can, they can also if they come last minute, like Captonians love to do, <laughs> not just last minute. They like to come five minutes into the show. <laughs> They like to me- meander in and go. Oh no, the queue to the box office uh, out the door. <laughs> How are we going to get tickets? We're going to go to Quicket, damn it! But, yeah. okay, but people can you can still get tickets so if it's not sold out online um, at Quicket. You can then still come try your luck yeah. at the lobby if it's at the box office. So we'll. I hope mm. they didn't tell me otherwise. So. <laughs> no, I would imagine that that would be the. It would be similar to to previous okay. years yeah. in, in that. No, but I'm just thinking if, if they're actually not having someone selling tickets, if it's strictly online now, I'll have to check on that. So just make sure. If, okay. I'm not telling people to go buy tickets at the cinema. First check online, it'll be safer. Yeah. 
So uh, just because uh, since we did mention COVID again, uh, selecting mm. movies for this year's festival, were there any th any topics or subjects or themes you kind of tried to avoid, or was there anything that you specifically <laughs> added? No, not. We were actually worried that, but uh, there wasn't enough time because there were all these COVID zombies, all these movies. Oh right, out yeah. Low budget, capitalizing on the situation, yes. <laughs> but we didn't receive any of those. Guys. No, and 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 we do have like a few movies that sort of end of the world, like Mutant Blast for sure. This is a very uh, sort of uh, apocalyptic, apocalyptic idea, but craziness. But I mean, it's a it's a funny movie. And I think movie, it will be it will relieve some tension. It won't cause yeah. tension. And, uh, Argent I think it's an Argentinian. Mexican Argentinian movie Toxico about uh, it's like I think it's a um, like an insomnia pandemic that takes over the world. So it's okay. pandemicish, but not. So it's an interesting angle. Yeah, but we didn't steer clear. We we, okay. we specifically did. We didn't. No, we didn't. We the, the only like we said the only limitations we have no real pornography or real 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 human or animal abuse. That's that's okay. the stuff that. Chopper. So, anything else? Hey, it's if you're creative in whichever way, like the Toxic Avenger, we have to mention that. I yeah, was going to ask you. I was going to ask you about that because yeah, I saw, I saw the trailer years, for both years. Toxic Avenger and Toxic Avenger Part Two in your playlist, and I'm like, it's I have insane. to watch this, and, uh, but I'm gonna hate myself. Yes, but you must watch it as a double feature, it man. You oh will, yeah, 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 yeah. We have to double feed because it's only available. It's also just available for a two-day period. Yes, so actually, watch them on one night. And yeah, we actually had quite a. Um, we we <laughs> have a little bit of a collaboration with Troma this a year, little, which is a little is, mini Troma fest yeah. inside the festival. I saw that. Um, Shakespeare Shakespeare Shitstorm is also a, a Troma movie. Um, and that's a Shakespeare Shitstorm is the official opening movie of the festival. And then um, <laughs> the Mutant Blast also is a, a Troma film. It's also linked to them. Yes. And then there's another movie that. Only when we watched it, we realized this is also what I think they made and then got distributed by them. Uh, okay. The Slashening. <laughs> it's like a, a, oh, yeah. a slasher. It is, oh man, it is. Some people, yeah, actually, yeah it's, it's funny, it's funny, it's silly, and it's got some hectic gore, <laughs> gore bits that will freak some people out. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I mean, if, you know, if you know the trauma, if you know Lloyd Kaufman and trauma, yes. you'll know it's just so off It is it's so not crazy. to be taken seriously, and if, if you are a discerning, like, horror film snob, I don't know that that's going to be your bag. But yeah. all those snobs should know trauma, trauma, and they should know that it's this planet unto itself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Traumaville is this town in New Jersey, and that's where all this stuff happens. And yeah. the Toxic Avenger got born there with a guy that fell into a vat of toxic waste and started <laughs> no, I mean, taking revenge on the bullies. It is it's brilliant. absolutely brilliant. If if you like that kind of horror, it is it's probably the best in its in its, it's schlock and horror and, and comedy and mm -hmm. everything rolled into one. Yeah. But I mean, that's the lovely Toxic thing about uh, horror as a genre, because it is so broad. I mean, basically, if you wanted, if you wanted to watch just one subgenre of horror for the rest of your life, you probably could could pull it you off. Could. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, got, yeah. So, I mean, Alien is a science fiction horror, so mm. it's, you've yeah. got, you've got everything and anything. And I mean, trauma, it's funny. You will get a yeah. very good laugh. And and, vul and vulgar, vulgar and, and rude and crude, but that's what that is. That is the fun. Fun. That yeah. is the fun. Yeah. <laughs> so so if, if you're prude, it's probably not for you. <laughs> so on 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 oh, that subject, one, sorry, because we, all these years, all these years, we've been wanting to screen trauma movies, but it just never happened. So this year, we get to do five, which is great. <laughs> so you're making up for last time. Yes, um, <laughs> and another one is Full, full Moon Productions. Yes. Okay. They've also been around for about 30 plus years. I mean, Trauma has been around for 45 years. Yes. And I think no. um, Full Moon Pictures, they've been around for 30 plus. Uh, Charles Band, they've made these, man, the, the, the Puppet Master movies, lots of movies with dolls and puppets, yes. like oh, yeah. Demonic Toys, Doll Man, or oh, Demonic yes. Toys versus Doll Man. Uh, yeah. The Evil Bong, part one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six. Yeah. Um, Family um, they've, and uh, shrunken heads, just this mm. kind of, like low, low budget indie but cool, classic, cool, funny, Cold classic, classic movie. movies. So, yes. we, we haven't screened any of their movies over the years. So, this year we're also getting to do two of theirs, yes. Okay, um, yeah. Blade, which is a uh, Blade the Iron Cross, which is mm -hmm. 
the little Nazi uh, <laughs> puppet from the puppet master with the with the with the knife blade and the hat, like a skull kind of guy. Uh, um, set in World War Two, with you know a Nazi zombie army, uh-huh. obviously. <laughs> and, and the other one is uh, Necropolis Legion, which is uh, links back to a previous one they made in the eighties, Necropolis, and that was directed by Chris Alexander. He was actually also the uh, editor for Fangoria magazine for a long time. Yes. Okay. And we've been connected with him for years. Yes. We screened these movies, um, The Queen of Blood, uh, Female Werewolf. Yes. Um, we've actually got two of these movies this year. We've got this Necropolis and Space yes. Vampire. Space Vampire. Which oh. is a kind of a trippy, uh, trippy experimental thing. It's uh, mm. sort of a, a trippy experimental visual thing. <laughs> yeah, and then we also have to mention um, Raven's Banner, who also... Yeah, they also Raven sort of, Banner. Raven Banner, yes. They also um, loads of their movies. stepped up to the to the plate in supporting um, small some, small festivals this year. The movie Yummy. It's like, what, what, what are we on about them? We just waffling on. Or what's no, going? we didn't give Jacques any. <laughs> one 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 of theirs is. Well, you can ask us again. It's fine. You've got time. We, no. <laughs> one of their movies is Five Sharks. Yes. Um, yummy. That's the one with. Plastic surgery zombie outbreak in a dodgy plastic surgery clinic in Eastern Europe somewhere. Mm-hmm. Also with humor, humor, humor in it. Yeah. Um, there's like uh, and Toxico is one of theirs. Uh, Benny loves you. Oh, Benny loves the you. Guys, yes. teddy bear. He's he's child teddy bear. Teddy. Yeah. And, you know, gets like, gets seriously peeved off when he gets like put into um, storage and um, um, he takes yeah. revenge. Kind of for the Chucky fans, yes, it'll be yes. like that one. Um, there's another one, um, Origin Unknown, uh, Mexican movie. It's actually made, made by a Mexican director who's got the most, one of the highest grossing Mexican horror movies. On Still Netflix. to this day, this movie oh, is wow. number one. So, is it? Yes, yes. Um, right up about it. it's, uh, it's about a cartel guy that's trying to leave the cartel and they hold up in the safe house and then these weird things, yes. a girl arrives <laughs> and some weird people start arriving and weird things start happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, but another another local movie, one well, local South African director now living in London, uh, The Unfamiliar. We're screening that as well across a two two day period. It's kind of a possession. Yeah, possession it's brilliant. Movie. Very proud of 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 um, our expats mm. this year, I must say. And he's also got a short film, uh, Transference, in the short okay. film collection. Yeah. Um, man, it's just... Let's give Jock an opportunity to Jacques. ask a question. Jock, ask us. <laughs> I Before shall ask Zuckerberg. you. I was going to ask you something. Um, okay, so I asked that one. So, what are your favorite parts of organizing the festival? And then the, another question from Wendy and Darling, actually. Um, what do you enjoy most about horror movies? Wendy, I love. The I, I love this about horror movies and I love this about action films as well. Is I like it when the the bad oak really really gets it. He gets um, it well. And he gets it well. That's why the ending of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is yeah. probably Tanya's favorite part. But I, I, I <laughs> what I love what I love about horror movies I love a movie that truly truly scares me. I love a movie that makes me makes it difficult for me to sleep at night. That <laughs> I keep on thinking about i love that kind of scare it okay. is the best kind of scare and if a, mo- if a movie can achieve that you've made a brilliant movie so what was the for you for you what was the last movie that did that well yeah you can, you can uh, um, think- i would say um, hereditary hereditary okay. for me uh, was Although it didn't have scares as such but it was just such it a was cool- such a disturbing film it it mm. it, it, it just took you into the most darkest places in your own mind and yeah. um yeah it, it, it just it was so so ultimately <laughs> disturbing um that i still I, to this day i want to see the, i want to see it again but i'm actually like holding off on seeing it again because okay. i'm i'm still not recovered from seeing it initially. <laughs> for me i don't i guess i've been desensitized enough not to be not to be scared but that's not why i like them i just like you know it's kind of a cathartic thing i guess for mm. most Yes. Stuff happening. Yeah. You get like a little bit of a, not necessarily a fright or a scare, but like a little twinge adrenaline rush thing. And some people like yeah. that. I, guess. I have to mention, just sort of an honorable mention, um, 
drag me to hell. I know, I know many people say that's so probably not one of the a good example, but probably one of the movies where I got the biggest script. I really thought that I was going to walk out that cinema with gray hair because <laughs> I, it, it was so hectic. I got such a script that I was <laughs> incapacitated <laughs> for. So when he, something can incapacitate me, that's, 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 the, that's the one. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, and the other question is, uh, what was your, what's been your favorite part of organizing uh, the festival over the years? Oh, yeah. We keep, we keep, we keep avoiding on. that question. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I guess, just like with we mentioned with the soundtrack, is afterwards when everything went well, because okay. there's just so much that can go wrong. Yes, it's sleepless nights. It's, uh, it's technical things. I mean now. For this now, this is such unchar uncharted territory for us, mm. uh, doing it online, uh, just, you know, hoping everything will, will go. Because yeah. we always we, we always try our best to do everything 100%. Yeah. So, but then if, if it's out of your hands, you kind of you kind of panic a bit. But then we also forget, you know, people are understanding and they will say, yeah. well, it's cool. If I can't watch it now, I'll watch it then. So there, will, there might be delays with some of the movies that are supposed to start tomorrow, but we'll... We'll just spread the stuff out. Yeah. You got you got sixteen days. Eh? <laughs> Look, I mean, like, like anything, like anything okay. that you'll get to everything. Yeah, like everything that's done for the first time, they will. I'm sure we we expecting TV problems, but we also we have a lot of faith in the expertise that Fright Fan TV actually offers, and and mm. they really have come and stepped up to the plate as it relates to. Yeah. They um, even they also posters at the back here. Yeah, they also printed these posters. Yeah, to to get up around Cape Town. So they've really been yeah. amazing, yeah. and they've they've gone they've gone over and above yeah. uh, what we what we really expected, and 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 therefore again, I just want to reiterate that I'm like super proud to be um, yeah. affiliated or associated with them during this. Um, but for me, the the festival, like I said earlier, I'm not going to get I'm not I'm gonna, I'm missing out on on sort of the payoff of. Handing out, I think handing out prizes for me is probably one of my favorite things to do. I love yeah. doing that. I'm I, like making up. And I love making, <laughs> like putting the prizes together and like thinking mm. how I'm going to do it this year. That's always just such a fun thing for me to do. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of little things that that um, I'm gonna for sure miss, but then there's a lot of things that I've never had so much time on my hands <laughs> like I like I have now. It is insane. Um, and technically, yeah. it's doubled for me, so it's yeah. It, it's just for me. It's the 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 physical things I've been removed mm. out of yeah. out of the mm. out of because I normally help all of coordinating. She carves a pumpkin, you know. Stuff you like know, that. I coordinate. I'm the festival coordinator, so like, like. When we yeah. when we have like little stally keys or like a little market, market or yeah. you know, stuff like that, um, and and making sure there's flyers everywhere and like all the physical things that goes uh, um, along with it, I'm I'm gonna miss that this year for sure. Yeah. We're going to have some kind of giveaways. We'll either you know if people in Cape Town will meet up and drop it off them like Bathory, Bathory makes these very cool cosmetics. Yes. Um, we have like oh, a, yeah. love in veins love in veins they are one of our partners um they make these most beautiful um little um it's blood vials yeah but you you put each other's blood in the vial and wear it around your neck so it's like yeah it's for all the it's, vampires it's, it's, you guys are gonna love it more, more, more commitment than just putting a ring on okay yes wow. uh, uh, yeah and, and we um, also we actually haven't we haven't chatted with our friends at mr lucky tattoos they they usually give us some some tattoo vouchers to give away, but we haven't discussed them, so we're not saying that we're doing it this year. But we're just yeah. mentioning them that we always have them we well. always partner with them, and, and and we've always been very appreciative of them. So just a, like a little mention of them as well. They, you'll see, I think before the short films, you'll yeah. see you'll see little trailers of of them. So you can, yeah, okay. we've tried to incorporate our um our long time partners yeah. and our connections. Um, this year with with little trailers and little bits and bobs here and there you know remember that back in sort of at least you know, even four years ago we used to have these dvd collections i prizes had, i got and, one of those yeah. is it i got one of those then, we're still going there through was still them. DVD it? <laughs> we still <laughs> haven't finished watching all of them because there are a lot no, no. 
so people wouldn't you know they, they don't do that they don't when this i think next is the only distributor yes. and they don't do that they don't do they just send them to the shops and that's it they don't have budget to, to do giveaways but back yeah. then they can't give you they can't support your festival with any kind of funding so they just give you a bunch of horror yes, movies. And, and in the past we've also had penguin supplying yeah. us with, with yeah books. we actually didn't yeah we didn't contact them this year unfortunately because i just we weren't gonna have a live book thing and yeah, yeah. i might still chat with them and see if they want to do something because throughout the festival we can then do mm. do yeah. some book giveaways with but we'll see um well i mean okay so a little a... time but still a lot of time sorry no i said there's so little time but still a lot of time yeah, you know what I mean. Little time to get everything sorted, but then once the festival runs, it's going to be over two weeks. So <laughs> hope it will go nicely. Okay, so there, there's a Sorry follow up. From... You. Sorry, no, yeah, there's a follow up from Wendy and Darling. If you enjoy being scared, do you keep your li lights off at night? <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> we do for sure, um, but I do lock my doors. I'm, I'm scared of, I'm, I like being scared of the things that's not like real. But I'm very scared of things that's real. I'm, I'm probably most scared of other humans. So, um, yeah. so it's two different kinds of scares. Yes. Okay, how's yes. the interjection? So the movie, for the sake of vicious, is too realistic with guys home invading and stuff like that. Yes, I, 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 that kind of thing is not my my bag at all. But <laughs> um, yes, we sleep. With, we, I love dark. I, I actually sleep yeah. with um with the. Um, what do you call those masks on? Because I, okay. I can't, the light is too much for me. Or... And I always have the TV on long time, so she has to wear that so the glow doesn't upset me. Yes. Okay. So, a creature of the night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, think it's, I, think it's, I think it's exposure to the screen all day long that just does that. And then I'm watching TV, so I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot with that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Staying awake and accessing what's keeping me awake. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, but we definitely put on some crap TV shows in New Forest. We definitely <laughs> are uh, evening, evening people. We are night people. We we've always been uh, even before the festival. We've always been evening people and um, not morning people at all. Yeah. Um. And uh, yes, I prefer night to day, and I prefer the moon to the sun, and all those <laughs> beautiful gothy things. Um, She's an old goth. I am a complete anyway. goth at heart. So for me, yes, uh, the, the the dark is always better. It's cooler. It's it's calmer. It's um, it's just that when the, I'm like I'm like the Depeche Mode song. I'm waiting for the night to fall. Basically, <laughs> she, she 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 dreads it when summer comes around. Yeah, this is a difficult time for me this time of the year, especially when it starts getting warmer. I when I can, we head off to to the northern hemisphere when we can afford it. <laughs> I mean, she'd, she'd love to have like an American Halloween, like in fall, autumn yes, time, as I opposed think. to. It, it 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 lends itself to 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 cold weather, where your the the pumpkin that you carve lasts mm. longer. You can you don't you 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 know for me for my age type of person that doesn't want to wear a slutty Halloween costume. <laughs> slutty nurse. <laughs> You know, I don't want to be like slutty nurse or slutty vampires. Like the we, class, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it, but that's not for me. And the costumes, the costume that I'm planning on wearing this Halloween is probably going to be warm, and I'm going to be uncomfortable, and <laughs> and, and and and. So yeah, <laughs> Wendy, I hope that covers everything for you. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, this is the 16th horror fest. I mean, that's a pretty amazing achievement for an independent operation. Um. So, you know, regardless of what keeps yeah, you up actually, at night. <laughs> um, yeah, it's actually, like 16, you don't really think about it, but like, you like sit down and go, 16 years, it is. Yeah, it's, it's. It doesn't feel like it. No, it? no, it doesn't. And it is, it's, it's, uh, like I said before, it's a labor of love. It's 16 years of, of trying to provide something to people like us, the stuff that we like, the stuff that the, the yeah. more sort of left of center people, the more alternative people, and not even just alternative people. I mean, there's a lot of people that's like straight down the middle that love horror movies. It's yeah. just providing something to them and, and doing it for 16 years is a privilege. It really is a privilege, uh, a privilege. It, it, mm. It is an honor to do it. It's 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 nice to do it, even though it's a lot of work and and it's, it's basically a one man operation with with assistance. But we, you know, we we do everything together, 
and yes. we enjoy doing things together. Yes. That's why I think it, it's not like it's it doesn't feel like that big a deal. Yeah. You never see it. it's our, our bands like the Terminatrix, Macabre Ensemble, Sonia's Isabel project. We collaborate on everything, and it's that's what we do. Yeah. So we yeah, and, it, and it's nice because it gives us opportunities to collaborate with our friends and 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 um, have contact with people that we only see once a year. Yeah, and. It, yeah, we, make, we make movies with friends. Yes. We all have a gap. And we, <laughs> you know, we, we kind of we, 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 we recreate the stuff that we like. So we like mm. interesting music or weird music and weird movies. So we and, and we always, a, a Terminatrix music video will always be able, you can always screen it at our Fest. Yeah. <laughs> you'll always have like some kind of angle. <laughs> so that's like us capitalizing on things. But um, it's, it's called yeah, synergy. Yes, exactly. And I think we are just so we are just so used to 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 doing yeah. this and thinking about it and um, planning it and executing it that it, it's just become a part of our lives. Really, I, I don't know what's going to happen if if we if God, but if we're not here anymore, I don't know if anyone would continue with it. It would be nice if someone does. But um, but the difference is, it's not like we have this template that we can just now give someone because. There's so many factors that just it's it's all in my head and <laughs> I do them as they need to be done. Yeah. It's not it's not listed yeah. or, or, or cut or on a calendar or anything like that. It's just it's this uh, automatic yeah, it's, function. <laughs> <laughs> you know October's gonna be a, like a, a, a nightmare. Mm. We which it should be. It is October. <laughs> it's a real so, night. Real night. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I don't know, I just it's also with just growing up as kids, my brother and I, we used to, we were Kiss fans, became heavy metal fans, you know, started listening yeah. to bands like Iron Maiden and Metallica and Slayer and Wasp and Nuclear Assault. And then with that was, you couldn't really find that music here. You had to go to a shop like Ragtime Records and buy the import LP. Uh -huh. And then, you know, it's, it's sort of like, it's kind of like a, like a thrill that you are one of they're like three of those albums in, and that's it. Yeah. So you are one of these few people who actually got this and you play it to your friends. <laughs> and if they like it, even cooler. So with this festival, we're accumulating all these cool movies that most people don't know about. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not going to be screen in the mainstream cinemas. Oh. They're not going to be on TV. Some of them might end up on Netflix or Tubi or some of those channels. But for the most part, we've now accumulated this cool little little thing that we can share yeah. with people. Yes, and, and we surround ourselves with our tribe, with our with our people. And yeah. it doesn't matter where you're from, which walk of life, race, religion, it doesn't matter to us. If you are if this is something that sort of tweaks your interest and you like doing watching horror movies and you that's like that's our kind of people. Yeah. And you know kind of you kind of in on in on the secret you can now also access this stuff that yeah. you <laughs> painstakingly put together for you. Our little preciouses. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the cool thing is that a lot of that, well, besides that now the festival will be way into Af just entire Africa, mm. some of it now actually the rest of the world as well. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Really can we mention our achievement? Which one? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, we got, a, got contacted by... American uh, film industry magazine, Movie Maker magazine, okay, they added us to um, their list of the 50 best genre festivals ah. of 2021. Yes. So that is, I think it's supposed to go public tomorrow. Um, okay. Just so you're getting a scoop. Well, congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> Thank I've, you. I've no, it's the it's well learned, though. The oh, it's, I reckon you. it is, yeah. Well, so, so we, we we got the press release with the link and the link just has an error 404 so i don't know if they still need to upload it that is the landing page but they yeah. still need to put the info in there because yeah. it's it's a print magazine but they'll also be putting this info yes, online yes. i think it's a it's a quarterly quarterly film industry magazine so it was quite a nice surprise when they it was came and, to us and, it's, it's, and you know it's stuff like that that makes it that just you realize people do take notes and people do mm. they are aware of what you're sort of doing here on the very most southern point of the darkest of continents. Um, so because yeah, we got the light switch off. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the jungle. <laughs> um, With your load shedding on top of it. Yeah. So 
it is. It's an awesome acknowledgement. It, it really is. Thanks for reminding me. I hey. forgot about, <laughs> about that. Because it's sitting there, the old social network headache. It's sitting there waiting to be posted because I first want to see if that link will be going live. So we'll, yeah. we'll And we have been well. sitting on this info for months, and it's mm -hmm. it's nice to finally actually be able to. to I can't remember that they sent some questions about the festival. So I don't know if anything has changed since they asked us <laughs> back then related to the online or the cinema screenings. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the, yeah. what the details. But if up. you if you attend the South African Horror Fest, you are attending one of the fifty top genre film festivals. Remember that. Yeah, on the planet. <laughs> on the planet. Well, I, I I don't I don't need I don't need the 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 festival to win any awards. It's one of my favorite festivals, so I, oh. I absolutely love it. Um, are there any goals you'd still like to accomplish or achieve with the festival? Like, is there, like, if you had to choose your, like, one special guest or event that you think you could actually book? Um, obviously, like, you know. Always speak. Yeah. From the very first few years were the case. You know, we have to get, we have to get um, uh, old Bruce to come out. You know? So, mm. it was just not Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, get, get, get Ash to come out because he goes to so. I mean, I think that's his, that's yeah. his, that's his job. He goes to conventions and yes. just meeting people. I mean, we'd love to get every filmmaker that we screen. We'd love to get them all to come yes. to the festival, but we just so. I mean, that's why these American festivals are so cool. That people can just take mm -hmm. a little internal flight and attend the festival. Yes. So we've had some very cool filmmakers attend sort of by accident and. <laughs> On purpose. Yeah. <laughs> One for like, flew out for Kalu, flew, flew out from India. Um, uh, We've had Fiona. Fiona Horrigan, actress, she flew out for her mm -hmm. movie from the States. Callum here, Richard we had Stanley. Callum for I think, Richard, we Richard had. Stanley. That was for our Celebroid Festival, but it's all linked. Yeah. So it's, Would yeah. love to have Richard back again. Mm. He's now, such we, an incredible person. Every time we chat with him, it's a case of how are we going to get him here again? He says, <laughs> his game was just. <laughs> once, once we can make it happen, we make it happen. Yeah. I'm still yeah. annoyed yeah. I missed the screening with him of uh, Dr. Moreau. Live. Yeah, the, the live, live commentary. I, yeah. I found the clip the other day. I think we're going to have to chat and somehow we must either put the clip out and then just cue people when they must when they must start playing this. But they watched it, put the movie on and then put this track on. Because it's an extremely unofficial commentary track, obviously, mm. because he got kicked <laughs> off the movie. <laughs> but but it was I don't, know, I don't know I'm either I'm either very pushy or persuasive, but <laughs> it's a he never wanted he's never watched the movie. Yeah, so, that was so a very soft way. I mean, obviously, I mean, he put his yeah. heart and soul into this movie, and they just like told him to get stuffed and change the whole thing into like a, exactly what he didn't want it to be. Yeah, sure. yeah. So I kind of and then nobody went to go see it. it. Yeah, no, so I, I told him how cool it would be. If you would now watch this on the fly <laughs> and just comment whatever, so we had a microphone Vent. and Vent. I, I had my <laughs> I had the microphone and I had my my phone next to the mic so that we'd just record it as well for for whatever. But so that the audience at the library got this live commentary from the original director of Island of Dr. Moreau. No, and you know what? He's an incredible personality. He's an incredible mm. person. Like having having him in your house is. He just fills up the entire space. He's, and he's so amazing. You know, it's like you know, it's like when you feel when you stand, when you're speaking to someone, you like feel stupid because he's like extremely bright. So bright. Yeah. He knows anything about everything. He's like this esoteric shaman guy. He's just yeah. He's no, a, he's you a can... very the most unique, probably the most unique film, not just South African, but like actually film director. <laughs> he's definitely there. one of the most unique people I've ever met. Just people made. full stuff. Yeah, yeah he's mm. brilliant. He really is. So, so we definitely yeah. want to get him out here again. For something, yeah. <laughs> even if we just do another retrospective we, of his movie, it's just we've even tried like planning to go to to France to visit him, but we, that also never materialized. So he lives in the Pyrenees near yeah. Mont Montsegur, where the the uh, what are those guys called? The, um, those knights, the, the, the uh, Templar knights. Templars, Templars, yeah. All of the space into that stuff. It's, yeah. Uh, it's no, we very, had we had an invite. We just couldn't we, we couldn't yeah. make it there. There's now. a standing invite. We just need to yeah. get there. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, we we've had highlights in terms of 
when we um, shot the initial um, uh, werewolf clip, we mm. um, we were able to show it to John Landis, and John was able to show it to Rick Baker, and we did the makeup for you know, American we, Wolf we, in London. John hand. Landis is the director of yes. American Wolf in London. In case people don't know, we <laughs> got first hand like comments from these people on on giving us like saying, "Oh wow, this is brilliant oh. and well done." And it was amazing. It's it's the, we've definitely through the festival we've we've definitely been able to tick a few things off off of our back list. I remember one year Paul uh, directly phoned um, Sean Cunningham. <laughs> okay. To get the, the producer, he did he did the Friday the Thirteenth yeah, movies and yeah. the original um, Last House on the Left. Okay. And we were we were struggling we were struggling to get the rights and we eventually Paul managed to phone him directly. Because <laughs> I think someone, <laughs> someone somewhere connected and said, well, here's his number, try and say, okay. okay. And he was so cool. But he was state, so cool. Yeah. He said, oh, I don't remember. I think someone in Zimbabwe has the rights. Just worry show about it. it. I'm giving <laughs> you care. permission. Just, yeah. just, if they tell anything, just tell them I said it's yeah. fine. <laughs> and then I think the person that I would love to to be able to have at the festival is, is Mick Garris. Um, he did the um, the miniseries for The Shining, the version, the, the Stephen okay. King version, the, not the, the, you know, not the Kubrick, the, 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 the proper. The Stephen King version, but completely following yeah. the book. Yes, which, which I love. Um, and I, he's done lots of, he's done yes. lots of Stephen King. So stuff. I'm obviously a fan of Mick Garris mm -hmm. for, for the fact that he's been working um, closely with Stephen King. Stephen King, I, I would love to meet. We actually asked Mick Garris, there was um, <laughs> last year when we did The Shining, yeah. Shining and Dr. Sleep. Yes. We had like a bit of a Stephen Kingy festival. Even the, you know, the background of the poster was the carpet from the, from the Overlook Hotel. Yeah. The pattern. Um, so we contacted Mick and said, Mick, what's the chance of chatting to <laughs> Stephen King, King and see if we can do something? <laughs> he said, it's likely, but I'll check. So like, <laughs> a few days later, he said, oh, no, thanks, but no thanks. He doesn't. No, he doesn't like to, he doesn't, he doesn't like to travel, if I remember I'm correctly. I'm sure he goes to book launches and stuff. But, I, this, but I don't think he likes to do intercontinental mm -hmm. travel. Yeah. That's what it felt to me. Oh, yeah. another thing. We spoke to Richard Stanley about the color out of space. Oh, sorry, that's what oh. I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about um, Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Sorry, Nicholas Cage doesn't yeah. like the, the travel thing. Yeah, We're traveling to Africa. Yeah. We, we asked, um, we asked uh, Richard Stanley if we managed to get him and Nicholas Cage out for oh, wow. um, the color out of space. And then maybe Mandy and then <laughs> hardware. So we've got like, them uh -huh. together and individual. Yeah. He said, no, cool, but apparently Nicolas Cage doesn't want to fly to Africa because of, there was some, I don't know if they were like kidnapped threats when they were shooting yes, Lord of War, War when they yeah. shot it here. Oh, right. Yeah, so he's scared. He's, he's, he's mm. literally scared to come to, to the continent. So, I mean, maybe uh, that's so another opportunity scared. for the new the digital era. <laughs> okay, Nicolas Cage isn't scared. He's, he's cautious. He's cautious. As he should be. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, maybe that's so maybe that's another opportunity in the sort of new digital age. You can actually get somebody to just phone in from their home in Los Angeles. We've we've been doing that with, with some of the filmmakers. They sent us some some, but you know, also just the time to to get yeah. to do that. Yes. So that I, and with know, time differences. Like now we, we we made a gap now to sit and chat with you for. Almost two ended. hours. <laughs> <laughs> Can we wrote two hours on YouTube afterwards? Um, yeah, so it's, um... it's it's all within the realm of possibility for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, getting so we, 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 we've got a couple of filmmakers. We us, you know, I need to sit down and just edit these things together because it's not just we didn't just do a yeah. live chat. We they just yeah. shot some bits for us. And I was, I would, I want to do as many filmmakers as I can. So I'll still be doing it across the festival. If we get to do some interviews, we'll definitely post them. And, and for yeah. some reason, people would love Paul because when, um, when they shot Resident Evil, yeah, he managed to get um, the director um, Paul Anderson, Paul Anderson mm. to come to Horror Fest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember. That. I was at the screening. Um, yes. Yeah, so we, Paul has got this ability. And we are definitely counting on it too. I don't know. Like I said, I, I hope I hope it's been convincing and not pushy. It's a little bit of both. You probably need a bit of both. You can't just 
No, yeah. I think it's it's confidence. If, you, if, if you're gonna be uh, about it, they're just gonna say no, I don't have time. Yeah. No, because but yeah. they also mean they know the value of of the fans. Yeah. It's like with that, they're very they're very proud of that Resident Evil mm-hmm. from the very first movie. He's Absolutely. Still, yeah. He's very. Yeah. He always speaks enthusiastically about it because that movie kind of got him out of his funk with yeah with the whole uh, disaster. What was it? The movie was it? Uh, what movie was such a big screw up for him um i can't remember now was no. it that was it the that video game the uh, mortal kombat movie Possibly. it was a movie that was you know it was like, supposed to be a big like a hollywood kind of movie and it was like a flop or, and it was soldier a soldier before that or was soldier oh, after no resident evil no but yeah it, it uh hmm. anyway he, he kind of he was like depressed and playing video games and then the resident evil game sort of sparked him to, yeah. to get back into doing something and then that started this billion dollar freaking zombie franchise based on a video game which is not really yeah. actually it doesn't really follow the video game much, but the characters yeah they got their own lives in the movies as opposed yeah. to the the game characters which is also one of my favorite old playstation one games <laughs> yeah I played resident evil late into the night um yeah, so I think we're almost at the end of the uh, the chat. I think like two hours is a is a good innings, and I know you're quite busy. Yeah, yeah we I still have to we still have to shoot a few things tonight, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to remind you, the work never ends, Paul. But we can we can we can keep talking. I'm I'm happy to keep chatting. Um, I'll drop him a time for a cocktail, and then we can we can continue this we, conversation. We, we, we do a we do a post fest catch up. Yes, <laughs> to tell I'm, you if it worked or if it wasn't done. You've I'm, got I'm, a you've got an open invitation to the to the filing cabinet to come have a cocktail with us. I'm yes. I'm perfectly happy <laughs> to do a follow up. Filing cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cozy little spot. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching the short films definitely. Uh, Ryan also added a comment. Um, love your work. Thanks for keeping the horror face going. Really looking forward to the short films. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. the short films oh, are a hit. I mean, I think, uh, I, th- yeah, I, I, th- I suspect that there is a number of reasons for it. Like it. If you're going to be watching a two hours uh, sort of compilation yeah. of movies, attention span. Yeah, you know, people. I mean, it's, attention span has a lot to do with it. So you've got this completely eclectic mix of yeah. various stories, types of types of subgenres, all mixed into one. So it it goes a bit quicker than just watching one long straight yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. And Unless also, like very cool movie. Yeah, I mean, the the chances are that there's going to be one thing in there that you're going to like. Is pretty high, as opposed to like if you're going yeah, into a, if you're going yes. into a, if you're going into a feature film and like by half an hour in you're like mm. yeah you really but have you're kind to of like invest like emotionally, cognitively, like physically you have to invest into uh, sitting into a feature film. Hmm. But but with the with the chapters of short films, the Shadow Realm films chapters, it, it we've Paul have we've really worked hard yeah and put a lot of thought into how we um how we divvy arrange, them up and how we them. arrange them mm. so that each chapter has um a bit of everything a bit of everything and, yeah. and i think people are going to appreciate that for sure yeah. So yeah. We, we try not to do two zombies if they're zombie movies we try and spread them out unless they're more than five then yes. one's going to have two yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah, uh, you get you get like you get like a similar experience, I would imagine, yeah. with with each chapter because there's a little bit of every kind of thing in there. You yeah. were, oh, yeah, spread spread it out nicely. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I, that's that's uh, possibly one of my favorite parts of the the festival. So, like having now it's suddenly fun. having now fourteen you hours of them. it. Yeah. <laughs> Now you can watch them at your own pace, yeah, and not force yourself to be somewhere at a specific time, and then that's that. Yeah, we've also had times at the at the cinema when the the projector just died, yes. or the when we played it from disc. The, the disc was corrupted, and we'd say, you know, I had to like arrange a rescreening like a Saturday morning for people who wanted uh-huh. to see the rest of it. And then you know that you put the cooler ones maybe to its end, and then yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. So we we we're holding we're holding thumbs that uh, that all the streaming issues will be well that there won't be any streaming yes, issues. Yeah. Yes. But like I said, it, it's a there's a very very specific way that these things need to be at a certain frame rate and aspect ratio. And if the if the filmmakers yeah. upload it just a little bit differently, then it we, has yeah, to we get have redone. It's, it's issues. So they've been having issues like that for. Uh, all the way up until this moment so we'll but yeah. there will definitely be something to watch and everything that we said will be watchable will be there if not on the exact time it will definitely be within this period yes. but we're, yeah. we're confident that the program will the schedule will be as as we planned it yeah and again thanks to Frank for all the yes all the all the mission that they've been putting in they have been like Incredible. Yeah. And also, our, our friends out in social media that share the stuff for us because you cannot boost and sponsor, pay every single post for people to get to see it. So mm. it's cool when people help spread the word. So anyone and everyone here spreading the word, thanks so much. Yeah, we really appreciate um, it. It takes a it takes a huge burden uh, yeah. from us. Yeah. Yes. Well, and yeah, obviously, if people want to people want to see the entire lineup. With trailer links as well, horrorfest.info. You're probably going to throw some links in there as well. Yes. Yeah. And the streaming is frightfan.tv slash horrorfest. Yes. Because what if you go if you just go straight to frightfan.tv, you'll find you'll, there'll be a shelf with you can like mm. scroll through the movies at the festival. But in the top left, you'll have the home button. The next home button is a horrorfest button. If you click that one, it'll bring you up to a horrorfest page where. See each individual movie where you can click it to buy individual tickets or hit the red button there for the full yeah. festival pass. I mean, for Fright Fan um, uh, in itself, it's 25 around the title. Yeah. It's, it's, you, that's so, such a good deal. Yeah. Just going forward, if, if, if the horror mm. fest wasn't enough, um, we <laughs> want to encourage people to really support them. 25 around of a title is mm. like, it's nothing. And with the, with the horror fest, if you take a full festival pass, it works out to about 12 bucks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's value for money and we want to encourage people to support local initiatives yeah and it's mm -hmm. a curated festival so like someone's actually gone and watched Absolutely. all these movies and like someone someone somewhere on the internet has seen them and said yes i'll put them <laughs> i'll put this movie with all these other movies and like i mean how many movies are there like uh, there's more than 40 right yeah yes um plus no, then the, the yeah, Probably like well, 30, like 30, forty something. So, yeah, you know, it's just close to forty movies, and then all the short film, yes. feature yeah. length short film chapters. But yeah, like I said, it's not a case of finding movies randomly and shoving them on YouTube. There's yeah. a huge process going into <laughs> it. This, this festival, and, and have to yes. keep 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 the keep the movie secure so that the guys who supply the movies know that they won't get their movies. Yeah. Uh, pirated or stolen or anything like that so it's uh, yeah and it, it has been them. lovingly and carefully curated really <laughs> lovingly <laughs> and okay. we and we sad when the movies that we cannot screen that we need to bump out but then that's <laughs> also where we created festivals like the x fest and celluloid for stuff that's more more science fiction we we moved into the celluloid direction the more extreme, less horrible stuff or crazy, weird, Something that things. I don't want to watch goes to X-Fest. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't had an x in a while. However, yeah. yes. scoop, scoop. But we, I chatted with Ben at, at Fright Fan and said, asked us to look at Sally Joy down the line to run via Fright Fan. And maybe I didn't mention X-Fest, but I'm sure he'll chat about X-Fest as well. So yeah. we might have set it in X Fest festivals pop up on Fright Fan down the line as well. But this is very fine. I no, don't think you no, can. It's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, okay. we talked about it. It's and also to do, to do um, the permanent short film collections of the yeah. ones that we've done in the past. Yeah. So we compile yeah. we either recompile or just ones that were good collections as is. Mm. Obviously, going to have to just take a while contacting all the filmmakers and arrange all yeah. the stuff that needs to be arranged to be able to do that. So that's done. We haven't even started this one. We're talking about the cool stuff that's coming. But you have to do that, don't you? Yeah. Well, it's 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 good to it's good to hear that the 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 momentum is carrying on even past the festival. So uh, mm -hmm. good luck. Uh, Thank 
you. Um, I'm sure it's going to go fine. They will. They will. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there will be technical <laughs> issues. Um, but um, hopefully, It'll like the, the enthusiasm it's, 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 will it's, keep it's, you going yeah. past and through those. Yeah, and and if you have a full festival pass, if there's an issue with the movie, you can move on to another one. Um, Come back to it and go back. You can you can you can message Fright Fan, and if there's a technical issue, they can sort it out for you. It's yeah, anything and everything is doable. Cool. So final question. This is one of the more off the wall ones from the from the uh, comments. If you were mm -hmm. in a weird parallel universe, we could only watch three horror movies in your life. Which three would those be? Well, it won't be the scariest ones to sign up because then she'll never sleep again. No, it will be. I would uh, say. Ooh, she, um, she hardcored you there. It's always, it, it's always, <laughs> okay, I know what. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula for her. It's one of them. Mm -hmm. The Shining is always one for me. Um, Phantasm, possibly. The original Phantasm. Mm -hmm. That is such a cool movie. The first Insidious. Okay. Let me think of it. Further back, because there's so many movies that you just forget. I mean, the decades that we've seen movies, mm. it's just yeah, you forget um, stuff. That's actually you go, oh, that's cool. oh, that oh, oh, about that one. Yeah. Hey, look at the shelf through there. What's on the shelf? Um, you can't dark. see that far anyway. It's, no, it's too dark. I can't see, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but then you know, uh, it's true of the Iron Man. That's more of a science fiction, weird live manga thing. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't answer. Sorry. I like <laughs> too many different kinds of movies. Okay. Oh, even Vanna Hats of remake of Nosferatu. It's, uh, oh, wow. Well, yeah. It's just so cool. Yeah. I, I, or, I can... Death, even Death Race isn't a horror movie, but yeah. You know, Sonia loved it. We, when we screened that as a double feature with mm. Death Race and Planet Terror with the machete trailer in the middle. But, but those aren't really horror, horror yeah. flicks. For for me, I can I can with confidence say like Bram Stoker's Dracula, but but mostly for the way that it was shot. Uh, uh, it, mm. All of this, all of the effects in that movie was done in camera. All um, stuff, it's yeah. all practical stuff, and I yeah. Never mind the fact that I appreciate it for for the the fact that it's Bram Stoker, that it's a vampire, that Gary Oldman is in it. Yeah. Um, there's so many things that you can love uh, about that movie, and then. Um, there's franchises that I can can mention, but individual movies are a, a bit tough. Yeah. And also, like George Romero's Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. I don't like zombies. I can easily <laughs> say zombies can go. They can go. Um, I, I would say an American an American Wolf in London mm -hmm. would be would be in my top ten list. The original sure. Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. just so many cool movies. Um, and. I guess the old classic was like Frankenstein. It's not. It's a bit laborious to watch constantly. So mm. once in a blue moon, if you watch those old ones again. But ah, oh, that's it's always the most difficult question for me. Favorites yeah. or lists of yeah. what's your favorite song? <laughs> you have to you have to tell me which is my favorite song of this specific band within <laughs> this specific period or, or on this specific album. <laughs> now I remember Spling also had a had difficulty getting that answer out of us. Um, but but yeah. we, we try. We try. We try. <laughs> so I mean, I I, I think the, the answer that I'm getting from you is, we we can't come up with a list of three horror movies. That's why we come up with a list of forty every year. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. That would be accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thanks very much for the thanks very much for the time. I would love to sit down with you at the end of the yeah. festival at some point, yeah. on camera, off camera, just to hear how it went. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we do a, we do a post catch up, I reckon. Um, and I'm I'm just super psyched to to see the see the rest of the movies. So thanks very much. Um, and and, and John, thanks for being such an an incredible support to all of these years. You really yeah. are. Um, you've been uh, very present. <laughs> <laughs> I, I yeah, remember early it. early Saturday morning screenings being the only person in the in the theater. Yes. <laughs> Cape Town, yeah, Cape Town we, does we, not we like early like mornings. Uh, 11, no. 11 a.m. Was it 11 a.m. or quarter to 12? When was it? Quarter to, yeah, quarter yeah. to 12, those yeah. ones. Yeah. 
But thank you. Thank yeah, you for, for this time and, and for, for giving us a little bit of a, a platform and, and for your support as well. We really, really do appreciate it. Definitely. Cool. Well, thank you very much and good luck with all good the bye prep. Bye, <laughs> bye me. Bye, me. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yes, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.